so yeah, you uh, you were uh, Sam had recently completed a, a relatively simple uh, a right to interact with a recently deceased individual to try and get some information about what was going on. And he got some images and some feelings, uh, not really, you know, a super talkative ghost, but it gave you some impressions. Uh, and as he was rejoining uh, Jay and Alex over by the grandmother's grave after Jay had found a uh, what they assumed to be the uh, old woman's phone, uh, which had pictures of it looked like her being taken by something. Um, as Sam walked up, they were kind of bluff charged by this ghost that rose out of the ground and charged at them and looked a little confused when they weren't terrified and uh, sank back into the ground. <laughs> How disappointing for him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> you should have necromancy him and taught him a lesson. Did you know yeah. that guy? Did you know that guy? I, 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 I'd failed. Alex had failed his 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 Alex awareness he, role. Yeah, Alex was. So looking I, I, he's looking at the phone, and and as as this happens, yeah, yeah. it's just after his finished. I think Alex will look up and go, "Is this Mia Smith?" <laughs> I mean, yes, but more importantly. Big bloody ghost. Did you know, in the middle you know, of the day, no less. Uh, it's a ghost. Yeah, I mean, we're in a cemetery. I, I mean... I'm, I'm, I'm fairly new to this, but they generally tend to like to come out at night time. There you go. Daytime ghosts, rarities. Unless you're like in a dark room holding a seance or something weird like that. Um, so if he came out, he had a reason to come out. Yeah, so where'd he go? Well, down again. Did he come out of the same grave and go back into the... It wasn't really a grave so much as you get the feeling that it was more. It's not like he went into the ground. It's more like he built himself up from the ground up and then just kind of dissipated back down into the ground. He materialized and then dematerialized. And he was wearing kind of like colonial area clothing. Uh, oh. More like Old West type. Uh, you get the feeling that uh, he was probably like possibly a cowboy or a rancher um mid to late 1800s maybe okay okay so probably before they even consecrated his ground this was his land or maybe no because this was okay but yes yes that is mia smith wait i recognize her from the dancing yeah yeah i i, I mean uh, jay seems to think this is this is uh madison's so phone as you're looking closer at that picture, you get the feeling, like I mentioned yesterday, that Madison Madison liked to take pictures with her phone. Yeah. And so the the picture wasn't intended to be taken of uh, just living of in the Mia. same area, we just assume. Right. Yeah, well, what's the what's the date what's the time and date stamp on it? Um I hand it to Sam. I don't know. It's like three days ago. <laughs> and the closer Sam looks at it, Sam being a, a youth, as it were. Yeah. Um, Sam doesn't really get the sense that Mia was hanging out with other children there. You look at Mia and you compare to the, the kind of TikTok videos that you saw of her. And this picture of her from three days ago, she looks kind of disheveled. Like she never looks that way in any of her profile pics or in her TikTok videos. She looks very well put together. Um, her clothing looks ripped. She looks like she looks like she's been living on the street. Okay. Um, also, the the image of the person being pulled back was that image Madison or was that Mia? That was Madison. That was Madison. So she dropped a phone. It took the photograph, she, and she was being pulled correct. away from it. Yes. Okay. And from that that photo, we've well, we can assume it, it it took place right where this phone was dropped, as opposed to correct. Yeah. And that was and that was roughly because the three days the, ago as well. The direct previous shot uh, on the phone right before that one is of the grave that you're standing in front of. Okay. Um. And, and, and what, yes, what, what, that was also about three days ago. 
So what time of day is it? On, on the photo. Right on the photo. You're probably oh no, on, no, the no, on, on the photo. Yeah. So photo, uh, it's probably let's say it's four p.m. ish. Yeah, like four fifty three, something like that. Exact time stamp. Okay. And when people leave the cemetery, do they have to sign out as well? Um, actually, no. That's not required. You just uh, got to have the sticker on your vehicle for yeah. mm-hmm. driving around or whatever. Or okay, okay. Just letting them know. There's not like, them. I mean, you know, just FYI for the for the cemetery that might help because you got a lot of old people in here. You might go and visit other like relatives, and if they like collapsed on a grave and no one's checking up on them, you know, you, you need to count them in and count them out again. Do you want just, to? Uh... Yeah, Do you want I mean, to that's 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 maybe there's a suggestion box at the front. We can yeah, right. Put that well, in. Um, well, we could distract them with that because what we need to because if she's abducted, someone's left this place carrying an old lady over their shoulder without getting I mean, spotted. Oh, okay, and let's have a look around then. Now, um, are there any? Like poles with CCTV cameras on them at all around the stationed around the cemetery of various different places. There are. Because, right. So we need to get into the office and look at that CCTV footage from around this time, don't we? I. Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to tell them how to do their business, but I'm pretty certain that if she's reported missing, which she would have been in three days, the cops have already done that. Maybe. Maybe, and they wouldn't have finished. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a cop expert. Uh, but then again, um, maybe the cops can't see what we see. Also, maybe they haven't. Uh, maybe they haven't connected that she was here. Okay. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. it's a possibility. And we, but but and also, is there, and, is there, and if there's anything spooky going on, we want to mm-hmm. nip it in the bud before they get there, because then they're going to start cracking down on things and it's like, ah, oh, there's like ghosts yeah, and werewolves yeah, yeah. in the world and then they're going to take us away and they're like experimenting on us and like cut our heads open and like, you know, put electrodes in the brain and, you know, we want to stop all that. So, so yeah, yeah. CCTV. Okay. I mean, uh, I figure you probably know how to work one of those things, right? One of those CCTV things. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not in the wires. It's going to be a remote one. It's going to be transmitting somewhere to a central server. Um, it depends if it's a live feed that someone's watching or whether they record it. Probably not. It's more expensive to record. So it might, might even have the dummy ones, just as a deterrent. Okay. Um, so if you look I mean, at the one on top of the pole, the, the camera looks relatively... I mean, not new, but probably within the past five years or so. Um, but it is wired, and there are wires that are, you know, kind of strung to the next pole and then to the next pole. Oh, okay, okay. So, right. yeah, okay. I mean, I, I'm guessing, I'm guessing the people who hang around here will stick their bodies in a pretty damn litigious. Each of those um, poles also has kind of like a large flood on it as well. Yeah. Um, you would imagine that the graveyard is probably not lit up completely at night, but if there's a concern or if there's like a guard, you know, radios in and asks for floods to be turned on, they can be. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So yeah, um, I like I like your idea, um, Alex. I think we need to go and find that friendly guard. Um, go and get him a donut or something, distract him, and then slip in the back and and start looking at his screens. Well, he was in a pretty small booth. We got to, we we're probably gonna have to get into uh, the offices down. You're gonna have to go to the main offices, yeah. Um, um, okay, but um, and, and you're right. I'll, it is kind of in this area, uh, the like lakeside um, columbarium that also uh, houses the main offices, at least for this portion of the the yeah the memorial park. Um, and I did want to say this, but I wanted to wait until Lloyd got back so that you all heard it, uh, with regards to, cause I mean, you guys are talking about like, Oh, maybe they can't see that or, you know, things like that. There are certain things that 
quote unquote normal people might not be able to see, you know, obviously um, not everybody is going to see spirits unless they manifest with the exception of Sam as a necromancer, you automatically see spirits uh, even if they're not manifested. So you have seen, you know, spirits wandering around. I get what you're saying about spirits usually at night, but like, not really. I mean, they're all over the place all the time. Like day no, I, night I, doesn't I, really matter to them. As Sam looks around the cemetery, then is he just seeing? <laughs> is he I, seeing yeah, just tons, tons of guys around, around like right regular around. people. I mean, <laughs> he's probably so. If you can imagine in a graveyard this size, uh, the number of people that might be visiting on a daily basis. You know, we're talking maybe tens of people in this mind, I'll, I'll area six alone. Weeks, people generally tend to pass on, so it's only oh, yeah, people yeah. you know. So or he might powerful, be seeing, angry ones. Yeah. Yeah. He might be seeing half as many uh just kind of echo spirits kind of hanging about until they pass on. Okay. Uh, it's not like he's seeing throngs of the undead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean that would be, that would be a few here and there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. And most of them are like not even worth interacting with i mean they're they're little more than a vestige right that's just yeah. hanging on until like they a, kind of fade yeah. recording almost yeah I mean. yeah um, I recordings but yeah i did i did want to say aside from stuff like that there is not uh, you know depending upon the kinds of games you've played before where there are supernatural characters uh there's no like there's no veil there's no yeah there's no blocker. Like if if Jay turns into a wolf in front of a person, they see that, they see and they're yeah. they're probably gonna freak out. But like, there's nothing that prevents them from seeing it and believing it. They may try and like um, explain it away to themselves later. Right. They might have some trauma, but like they see it. <laughs> Same thing. Uh, okay. Anything supernatural. So, I mean, we're but... assuming then that if the police had checked the CCTV, they would have seen what was going on. Right. That's if coming. if it was something physical, it'll be on there. Okay. And yeah, so that's that's our first protocol then. Okay. So how are you going to gain access to that? What's your what's your plan? A plan. What? <laughs> What do you mean, plan? <laughs> yeah, who would have planned? I guess, I guess in, we don't see people walking around in uniforms or like um, white Artex tops with uh, like little golf buggies driving around. I mean, there are a few grounds people, yeah. Like um, cleaning up around monuments and. You know, a couple I would say you could see within within sight. Like there's this, for a, a a cemetery this size, especially with as many different um, sections they have in Colma. Like they they probably have a relatively large grounds force. Um, force is the wrong word. Groundskeeping core. I don't yeah, know yeah. group. Like they hire they they employ a lot of people. Okay. Okay. So, okay, so what you do is find out where they go okay. and get like a spare, a spare top or something so we can kind of like mingle with the, uh, we can look semi professional or semi professional. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I was, I was kind of under the, I was wondering if we could pretend to be police that we need to check the CCTV footage for missing persons. I mean, the one thing we could do, because we have that phone. We could offer it up for lost and found and then see if they point us. Oh. Where we need to go. Okay. Okay. So, I guess that we use, yeah, keep scared yeah. together. Why not? Why not? Make sure we've got everything we need off it first of all. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I mean I'm I'm fine with all three of you trying your, your approaches if you guys we'll want to do different ones. <laughs> So, okay. all right, let's, let's go with Sam first. First, first. Of all, Sam. first of all, though, first of all, I'm yeah. forwarding all of the photos, relevant photos and contacts onto yeah, my okay. phone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so Sam wants to backtrack some of the grounds folk to where they go. And they do kind of go to the, the main offices here. Um, and... Uh, 
you can see that there's a, a kind of a side entrance they enter. Um, it's very clearly marked, no admittance, you know, employees only. Um, but yeah. you can see where they're going in. I know people uh, coming out for a, for a smoke every now and then. Um, not on the grounds, actually. It's not allowed. Uh, although, if you kind of sniff around, you might be able to find somebody who's maybe ducked around a corner and behind a hedge and is doing it, even though they shouldn't be doing it on the grounds. Um, not the employees, anyway. Uh, Jay, uh, Lloyd, do you want to approach a groundskeeper and ask where Lost and Found is? Yeah, yeah sure. So yeah, they uh, they tell you that yeah, if you just go in the main entrance of the uh, the lakeside building, um, you can't see that there is actually like a little lake uh, for real in there. But uh, they tell you to go into the main entrance and uh, head towards the administrative offices, which are off to the right, off of the main entrance, and then um, the secretary will take any lost and found items. Um, really easy to find now i really like your james bond style approach sam um but i think maybe we should try jay's method first i I don't know i've I've, I've read up a guy i reckon i reckon he can be useful but you're gonna what what are you gonna do you're gonna take his uniform and no, I just want him to get want him to get me a shirt. I, I, I'm going to tell him it's like I'm a first. It's my first day. I'm running late. I'm supposed to clock in. Um, if you can just get me a shirt, then you know I can just slide in at the end for for, for check over. Give me a break. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, I, <laughs> I mean, good luck. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I see what you're wanting to do. Um, <laughs> I, because you have scavenger, I, oh, um, nice. I will let you. Um, I'll let you make an empathy check to try to convince somebody to grab you a shirt. Okay. Um, can I use charm? Oh yeah, charm. Sorry. Yes, absolutely. Okay, I've got one in that. So I love that. Yeah. Okay, the keys get open. Oh, yeah, nice. Tom. Whoa, so nice. yeah, he's like, oh, uh, um, uh, I mean, we, you gotta, you gotta buy them. Like, there's, there's a website. You gotta, you gotta, lo- <laughs> you gotta, but a website. Yeah. I, uh, mm. I, I, they didn't I'm tell you so to buy unprepared it. for this. I'm so unprepared for this. I'm gonna screw. You. Did you get a spare? I buy a I buy a spare off you now. All right, all right. Um, let me let me here. Come on in with me. And he's <laughs> well done. He's gonna take you to the locker room. Okay, cool. All right. So. So they kind of like they 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 wash this place. You know, I saw you kind of like you know sleeping out for. A, if you want to make sure you're not you're not seen, is there like you know? Do they have like they got cameras here, right? I can see them up on the poles. I mean, there are cameras, right? It's this place has security, but uh, whether or not they're they're looking for necessarily anything in particular, I mean, it's is it like is it, is it like a guy watching it all the time, or they just like record it and then and then check them afterwards? Tough to say. You'd have to get into the security office. Is that um, so? That is something that you're going to have to look around for, unless you want to ask the guy where the security office is. Oh, um, oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll ask him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like it, a, it, a believable <laughs> reason to ask that. Well, no, let's just say, let's just say that you know, I haven't got my pass um, yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm having, a, yeah, I'm going to pass. So I need to get that. Uh, also, like, if I'm out having a sneaky vape and I get caught on the camera, I kind of want to make sure that you know. I'm not going to get in trouble. I'm just like I want to get the guy on the side. You know, you know what I mean. You know, you, you get you get you get a bit stressed. Um, sometimes so, things happen. Always good to keep security he, on the on side. He as he's pulling out one of his spare shirts, which is going to be way too big for you because this is uh, <laughs> a larger um, young man. Uh, he 
it's like, yeah, the security office is just down off the administrative wing. It's, I mean, it's not hard to see. It's, there are signs. Cool. Okay. Uh, I need to go get my pass. They didn't, they didn't get you set up for this at all, did they? No, no. Absolutely. No, no, I, I, I'm be honest. I mean, I, I was completely lost, lost track. I was supposed to get this done a couple well, of weeks ago and everything. Uh, but you, 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 you are and get down there. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Thanks, dude. Thanks, dude. Right. Um, so, and, yeah. Alex and Jay, are you guys going into the administrative office? I mean, it's sure I think, but I don't know if we would now. I mean, if Sam was going to go ahead with his plan. Okay. There's probably not much point. Well, no, I mean, to be honest, we're kind of like a three-pronged approach. We'll, we'll be in like three different areas. So if we need, yeah, one of us needs to act to we're, we're, we're all going to end up in the security office. I mean, I can distract, I can distract the security guard. I like it. Yeah, Jay and I can do some kind of distraction. Okay. Um, um, it's like, they're fire. It's wolf loose yeah. in the office. <laughs> <laughs> And the cool thing is, they can shoot you all they like, and, right? And the wheels come off. <laughs> yeah. Um, they literally can. They can shoot him repeatedly until... Exactly. Uh, yeah. Unless they happen yeah. to have yeah. still the bullet. Now we're just going to drop this body over. Just... It'll yeah. take yeah, yeah. a while. You'll have, to, you'll have to drag his bloody yeah. carcass out of there so he can heal, but, um, but he will heal. Okay. Um, so I think... I think we're going to cause a distraction. Okay. Um, and, and we are going to... Well, we're going to stroll in. I don't know, unless Jay's got a better you idea. Do you, you have a, you you have a better idea, Jay? I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll see what, what Jay wants to do first before carrying out my stupid scheme. Okay, so you I will tell you this. Yeah. Just to keep it interesting, you will not see Sam as you head in through the main entrance because Sam is going through back. Yeah. Makes He's sense. been directed to take some some back well, you, ways. You know what my plan do. was. You've no idea whether I was successful or not. Uh, I mean, you can, that's true. you can text him. Uh, we could do yeah. that we one day, do yeah. dude. You got away yeah. with it. So, yeah. Does Does Jay have anything that he would like us to do instead of my ridiculous plan? Uh, no, <laughs> which is not a plan. <laughs> Can you not? Can you not? You're supposed to be have lots of reason here, man. <laughs> I was just like, we'll try and like get like I don't know, use a lost and found, and then we can kind of wing it. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm not that familiar with sort of your with, in the building, I guess. But I'm not that familiar with your sheet mark, but <laughs> you've got like like luck powers or something on your luck powers. Um, I'm not sure what you've got. And yeah. uh, I can't. Yes and no. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, so if you if you're gonna go the lost and found route, uh, the two of you together, I assume Jay and Alex. Yeah. You two walk in, um, and head to I, nobody across you. I mean, it's very easy to get to the administrative office. There's a secretary there to take people. So she looks up as she hears you approaching. She appears to be very aware of those kinds of things and uh, looks up and says, Oh, uh, gentlemen, how can I help you? Oh, we found this phone. Um, what's the area called? Sorry. Um, Oh, wait, 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 section B? I can't remember. We're in, uh, we, we were in section B. Uh, kind, of, uh, kind of a little further north next to that kind of that cross one. circle area. Yeah, yeah. So that would be section, I believe that's section E on the larger map. Um, yeah. But yeah, so you tell us. be like, yeah, we found this phone. It looks like it's been there for a couple of days. So she says, oh, um, uh, one moment. And she picks up her phone. Says, yeah, um, yes. There's, there's been another one. Oh, um, are you? She looks at you two again. She's like, are you, um, family of the missing? We are. As it happens, they're missing. Uh, what, it, yeah. No, what, you what, didn't. But that's what she said. That's what she's saying. Yeah. Um. I, I, Excuse me. Uh, we are we are family of the owner of that phone. Yes. Uh, w w can you uh, elaborate? What do you mean missing? Oh, um, um, 
No, it's. I'm sorry. I I it, I really shouldn't say. Uh, it, but you already did. You. <laughs> If you don't mind, would you mind speaking to the director? I would love to speak to the director. So her her office is just right through there, and she kind of indicates it's not hard to find. You take a left and a right. And okay. Right to the director's office. Okay. Uh, well, tap on the door of the director's office when we get there. And you hear kind of a, a not gruff, but sharp, like, Come in. Uh, and <laughs> so you open the door, you see a woman, adult woman, um, probably somewhere between late 20s to late 30s, um, well-dressed, shoulder length, hair pulled back in a sleek ponytail, um, deep brown almond eyes. Her door actually said uh, Maria Rodriguez is her name. Okay. Ooh. And um, impeccably dressed, you know, smart suit, um, kind of a contrasting colored top. And yeah, she she waves you in. She's on the phone and, and indicates that you should take a seat. Maybe sniffing a little bit, looking at Jay, considering how you describe Jay to be kind of rough and tumble in appearance and clothing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, I think Alex probably does a little bit too. Maybe a little maybe. bit. So, yeah. yeah. So um, maybe giving you both kind of a... Yeah. Um, <laughs> but then she says, all right, well, keep looking. And she hangs up and says, so uh, I understand that you've, you have missing family. Well, we didn't know they were missing until just a few moments ago when your uh, receptionist, your employee, <laughs> told us that our dear old grandmother had, gone missing. grandmother had gone missing. Well, look, I, I'm making it a point to speak to everyone who comes in. You have to understand if it's, it's a large cemetery, things can happen. Um, we don't track the movements of every single person in the cemetery once they've entered. Mm. Um, if you're here seeking some kind of recompense, I, until we know what's going on, yeah, we're hey, hold on, hold on a minute. with the police. Hold on a minute. Uh, recompense? We've just found out that our grandmother, our dear, beloved grandmother, is missing, and you think we've come here for recompense? We've only just found out, like, two minutes ago. How dare you accuse us of such a thing? Look, you have to understand, this is a business. And I'm certainly uh, uh, concerned for the people that come and visit uh, the, the pots that we take care of. But uh, it's, it's not in our, it's not in our, uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? It's not. It's not in our mission statement oh, to provide secu so. to provide security or um, overwatch of anybody who is is visiting the cemetery. Um, we have security. That's more than some places do. And if you go to some one of those strange uh, corpse piles down in New Orleans, people go missing all the time, and no one do they? It's after them. <laughs> hmm. Actually, yeah, a surprising amount of people go yeah, missing uh, in cemeteries in New Orleans. That's yeah. worrying. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, we're not after any money here. We just want to find our relative. Now, we found her phone over by her mother's grave. My dear great-grandmother. Um, and so... We'd like to know what happened. I, I, I'm going to call up the photograph, and, and I'm going to hold that in front of her. Um, uh, both of them. The, the first one, obviously showing that she was in the cemetery, and then the second sure. one showing her getting grabbed away. Okay. 
now? Well, that's uh, that could be anything. And she dropped her phone. Uh, maybe she was walking away and forgot it. I don't know what you're trying to imply with this picture. I'm not. I'm not implying anything. It's just a photograph. She was here at this time. So, how about you let us look at the CCTV and see what actually happened? Or I can. Really, we could just go and get the police to come down and have a look at the CCTV footage and see what happened. I, we are working with the police fully. Uh, I'm in almost daily contact at this point with Detective Ortiz. Detective Ortiz. Yeah, we got her name. Yeah, we, we have. I don't want to let her know that we know. Okay. <laughs> yes, if you, if you want to uh, uh, make a complaint or, or if you have further information, perhaps you should take it to... Make a complaint? What the... Look, are you judging us by our appearance here or something? Uh, look, we're, we're from out of town. We just go in to view our relative, to, to see our relative, and we find she, out just a few moments ago that she's missing. She places her hands flat upon her desk in front of her and, and lowers her head and then looks back at you and she says, Look, I'm sorry. I've had a lot of people in here in the past couple of weeks losing their minds over their loved ones. How many people? I, <laughs> Rodriguez? Right now, we're at 13. 13. Yes. uh, In how long? Over two weeks. When you say over two weeks, you mean two weeks, right? Nobody says over two weeks. That could be any time. That could be six years. (laughs) You mean two weeks, don't you? (laughs) Two weeks. That's a pretty bad average. It is. Uh, But I assure you, as I said, we are working with the police. I understand you're concerned about your grandmother. We're doing all that we can. Hmm. Quite a serious problem here. Quite a big PR problem, I think. Well, now you uh, um, only if it gets out. I believe people go to the press, right? Look, now I don't think it needs to come to that. As I said, we are working with the police. We're a trip advisor with you. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. let's take a break from you talking to yeah. Maria yeah. and let's go yeah. over to Sam. Sam, at this point, you have, you find yourself outside of the security office. Okay. Right. It very prominently says security. Mm-hmm. It is a solid door with no window. What do you do? And it has a little press button kind of code thing on the knob. <laughs> Press the button. So oh, you mean like the, the numbers and then you twist it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. There's like a, a yeah, yeah, okay, okay. On, the, on the knob. And there's no outside windows at all? No. Bang on the door. Okay. So after a moment, uh, the door is, is just yanked open by a large... And I mean large. I mean, I don't know how tall... Uh, uh, Sam is, but this guy is probably 6'5", and uh, he is decidedly not built like a basketball player. He's built like a football player who's gone to see He is a massive, massive man. So, what do you want? And then he sees your shirt, and he's like, what are you doing over here? There's a dog. There's like there's like a, there's like a dog that's gone mad over there, and uh, we need to, we try to get someone from security to go and help it out. It's like it's like fucking. Like kids, they're trying to hold it back, but they asked me to get someone over um, to go and help out. I haven't seen anything like that on the feeds. No, 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 no. It's, it's, in, it's in a dead spot. That's why there it's trying no, to, to come and get you. There are no dead spots. You've got the whole park covered. Really? What about 
And I don't you know. Well, the, the lake. All right, give me a charm roll. Okay. Uh, 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 come here, you. Oh. <laughs> So he looks you up and down, and he grabs his his uh, walkie off of his belt. Thomas, is, is he is he is he like is he like come outside or is he like open the door? To peer no, me he's or... standing in the door frame. <laughs> he's standing in the door frame. Yeah, Thomas, head over to the lake. One of the groundskeepers says there's a wild dog. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't seen anything either. And you're not hearing the response because he also has an earpiece. Um, which is, you know, kind of tied into his rig. How right. how in Let how in the doorway is <laughs> what's that? How in the doorway is he? Is he like like struggling I mean, it, you, or is he like well can... behind? No, I don't know. He's him out. Yeah. Uh, he's he's not coming it. out. He's he's yeah. holding the door open. The door clearly is on some kind of a automatic closed system, so that they don't just accidentally leave the security office door open all the time. But yeah, 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 he he puts his clips his his walkie back on his belt, and he's like, "All right, anything else?" Uh yeah. Um, I I I need a new pass. So, <sighs> so I, I I dropped it in the lake where I was trying to trying to sort the, the dog out, and they said, "You need to, you can't be here without a pass. You need to come in and get get a little temporary one from the security office." All right, no, look. Not... Fine, come in. Oh, they sort that dog out. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> so he he backs off. Let's see in the security office. It's a smallish room. It's probably no bigger than uh, well, probably the room I'm in right now. Um, there's okay. on one wall. There's a, a bank of screens, uh, and you get the sense that for all the screens that are there and they're a decent size, you know, they're large enough that you can kind of see them from uh, seated at the desk. You get the prioritize certain ones. You can just sit to others. No, they're, they're all changing. Like every, every five seconds or so, uh, five seconds isn't long enough. Every 15 to 20 seconds or so, they, they kind of click and switch and there's indicators on the bottom of each screen, like which camera uh, it's showing. Um, so there's quite a few cameras throughout the Memorial Park. Um, and he goes to a side desk and um, pulls out, you know, like an ID maker uh, and flips open a laptop and says, all right, what's your employee number? Uh, two, seven, four, six, eight. E. <laughs> he's, he's still waiting. Two. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Ab Smith, my my uh, Smith. I should be should be on there. So, all right. He uh, does a search for Smith, pulls up several uh, uh, files, and uh, yeah, that's, that's all of Daphne, Daphne Thomas Smith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was going to tell you. You can see as he's pulling up the files, they all have pictures <laughs> attached to them. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're never they're never flattering those things, are they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you gonna? What are you doing? Oh, uh, uh... now is <laughs> touch the darkness. Is it a, necessarily a um, damage to kill? kind of thing or can you use it to like I mean it's not effects? good it's not I know good. it's not brilliant it's necromancy it's not brilliant yeah yeah but could it, could it be used to like power, temporarily paralyze someone or something um I would say that with this particular use of magic no necromantic energy is going to be very bad for okay, any being fine. that it's directed at okay fine um I got none. Uh, 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 are you? Uh, I are mean, you is there, is there one of the, 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 the 
Are, are you wanting to like try and knock him out or something like that? Is that where we're going? I'm so weedy. Um, I'm scrappy, but mm. I mean, there, there is there are a couple of heavy objects around the room you could probably pick up and bash them over the head with. You can hit them with like a keyboard or want, a hard drive. I don't know if I want to escalate that far. Um, are there any other like hard drives like on the side? So obviously, like you know, when when they've taken the, the like videotapes on I mean, the side, yeah, there's, like, there's a whole bank of drives. Okay, and are they like are they are they dated? Um, they probably rotate them, don't they? So, like, so be, like, they're individual not, days. They're not dated, but knowing what you know of technology, yeah, they probably. You're guessing from the way the the system is set up. It's probably each drive is several terabytes, and so yeah, they probably alternate them out, or maybe they wipe them after a certain amount of time. Um, so I mean, could, looking at the rack, could I work out which one was three days? I go if they do on a daily basis, probably, or probably I don't have that information. No, that's fine. I'll just, I'll just start, yes. I'll just start talking to him. I'll just start talking to him about that security issue, how they run the system. So, man, ah, man, you know, you got all these cameras on here. Yeah, how much, how long, how much do you actually get on like, uh, like one of those drives? And it's like cost, cost a fortune, and I'm thinking, let's keep going. I try, so, like, you know, lovely day out here. You don't get any sunlight. Locked in this yeah. little, little box. If you're gonna try and, and flabbergast him with talking to him, let's. Uh, I, I, I would also. I mean, one of these people must look vaguely like Sam. He's fairly. He doesn't have any distinguishing features necessarily. He's just a he's just a teenager. He can have different hair. I mean, you know, they're not they're not gonna be perfect. They're gonna be high res. So let's <laughs> let's go ahead and do an empathy check because I think you're trying to beguile him. I am. And, uh, Get him to just kind of go with it. Let's see how you do. Miles. And at this point, okay. Oh, so, no, no. hang on. So uh, a, a thing that we haven't used yet, and this is as good as a time as any to bring it up, is you can actually use willpower to adjust your rules. Oh. By spending a point of willpower or more, you can increase your roll upwards to a success. Oh, well, I will make that an eight then. Um, In this case, you're going to have to make it a 10. Fine. Okay. So I think you're, based on what you rolled, you're going to have to, what, spend three will? Four. Four will? Okay. So you do distract him enough that he he finds a smith that is roughly your facial shape right yeah um and while he's kind of trying to talk to you and also get the id made uh he's like yeah uh, you know it's each each drive is is for at least a month sometimes more depending upon how much we're storing. So, you know, the drive at the top is going to be the most recent. So what if, like, people want to... Okay, fine. So I guess, and I guess you have to, like, take them out. Um, if someone wants to see them, then you, gotta, you just plug in a spare, I guess. And you haven't... Oh, yeah, we yeah, take them yeah. out, we, we wipe them, and then we move them to the bottom, and then we move them up. What if, like, the cops want to see, like, if there's a murder or something that's taking place? Well, they know that the, we only go back so far. Like we've, that's the way it is. You know, you can't hold on to everything forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you can't. So, so basically, like, like the last like few weeks is still on there, and you can't look at it at the same time because you wouldn't then be able to see the live stack. Oh no! I mean, we can bring up stuff while we're while we're recording. Like it's a drive. It reads and writes, like anything else. So you can look. Well, so you can look at historical stuff at the same time. Yeah, as long as it's on the drive, it's plugged in. All right, because there's like, so if I want to go back to, let's say, I don't know, three days ago, 4 p.m. Yeah. We could have a, you could, you could just, you could just pull that up without interrupting the, the rest of the flow. Yeah, and just view it on another monitor, pull up the right camera. No, you, you, can't, you can't do that. It's going to interfere with the rest of the stuff. 
No, it doesn't. I don't, I don't, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. You don't have to believe me, but we can do it. <laughs> Go on, show me. Uh, no, here's your ID. This will get you oh, in okay, the employee's okay. entrance. All right, all right, fine. Fine. Thank you. For, thank you. What, what's your name? Uh, a badge. You got a badge on? What is his name? No, that's too easy. His name is, uh, oh yeah, his, his name is, uh, Jeremiah Bentley. Uh, oh, I don't know the name. Okay. I don't feel like I've seen that in a, um, scenario somewhere. Okay. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> okay, thank you, right. Mr. B. Yep, get out You're there. Great get work. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, just go. Okay. Um, and so, uh, is there a code written like on a notice board? For... Okay, make an awareness check for me. Yeah, yeah. He's cool. Yes. If you you and... do see the entry code for the security office. On the note, uh, the uh, the cork board above the desk. Nice. Okay. Okay. So you uh, are doing that. Let's cut back to Rodriguez's office. And then I think after we have a few more minutes in Rodriguez's office, we'll take a short break. Okay. I'm just saying. So. What are you thinking? What are you going to say to her next? Um, it's very apparent she wants to keep the cemetery out of the news. He does. Um, yeah. She, um, at this point, she still thinks you're family, which is why she's not really giving you anything else. Yeah, I, I've I've already kind of thought about that. Um, okay, but I'm uh, Alex is going to have pulled out his phone um, and. As text, um, Sam, uh, and the message that he's texting him is "Gar it go him." <laughs> Great. <laughs> I guess that's how is it going. <laughs> Probably a good guess. <laughs> it's not the first text I've had. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, um, got ID, got code for security door. Um, that security guard won't leave though. Okay. Um, your your guess, uh, I'll just tell you this for free. Your guess, Sam, is that there's probably less security on staff at night. Yeah, and I think so. There's probably they have to leave the office to do their rounds, and it's probably you know empty at some point. Yeah. Okay. Alex reaches into his pocket and pulls out his pack of cigarettes and lights one up in the office. Whoa, whoa! What are you doing, sir? This is. It seems to me <laughs> that you have. A real problem here, and it, it seems to me that the police haven't been much use. Has well, it I'm crossed sure. your mind that maybe they can't help? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> that maybe this requires a different approach. Um, and we may be able to help you, but we're going to need, we're going to need to look at the footage, the CCTV footage. What are you, some kind of detective, private detective? Yeah. Yeah. So you're not related to the woman whose phone you brought to me. I didn't say that. 
<laughs> well, look, I I don't know that I can things at the same time. That's true. Uh, I don't <laughs> know that I can get the the cemetery to uh, the the corporation to to front the bill for a private detective. Well, I mean, what are you offering? I'm I'm look. We're talking about a missing relative. I'm not going to charge you for this. You're just concerned about your grandmother? Or are you going to look into all of these? Listen, there's, there's 13 people gone missing in the past two weeks. She pulls out a file and puts it down on her desk. And, yeah. and, like, and I have information on all of them. If you think you can help, and if you can keep me and this cemetery out of the press, I think we can come to an arrangement if you're not going to charge me. And, uh, yeah, and Alex, he, he waits for a moment as if he's contemplating. Of course we're going to help. Of course we're going to help. These are all connected. If this is going to help us find our dear, dear beloved grandmother, of course, we were going to find out. We want to find out everything we can. We're going to need as, access to as much information as possible. She stands Who's... up and uh, like turns and turns yeah. back around, uh, and bends over and picks something up and turns back around, and she puts a tub on top of her desk, like a plastic bin. Okay around and picks up another one she's like not only do i have the names of all the people who've gone missing i have all of their private articles as well okay are we allowed to look at these yes but i think uh before you do that we should probably take our first break right oh we should So, yeah, she, uh, you asked if, if you can engage, uh, look at all that stuff, and you certainly can. Um, opening the tubs, I mean, we don't have to go through it in detail, but there's a bunch of phones, there's some handbags. She actually indicates uh, one of the handbags as clearly having belonged to Madison Lee, who you're... Okay. ...is your grandmother. Yep. Um, they so they found her handbag. They didn't find the phone uh, at the at that time. Uh, right. It's interesting though because there are so there's basically if you go through the effects and you take a few minutes to go through them all, it looks like you have property for um, seven of the thirteen people. Okay. But not for the other eight that she mentioned. And the file that she gives you indicates which people you have property for and which people there's no trace of that are, are just missing, but have been have checked in to the cemetery. Um, okay. Do we have info on where the items are found? Uh, yeah, so all of the items have been found kind of situated around that area where Madison Lee's mother's grave is, uh, kind of close to where the construction is happening and, um, you know, kind of in that general location. Um, Rodriguez tells you that the remaining uh, missing persons that they have information on are actually appear to have been visiting plots uh, that are kind of all over the place in the cemetery, not cent not centered around that one area. Okay, that was there might be two separate groups. You think? Well, there's like a group that are very specifically like this kind of area, and the rest are like. Elsewhere, it might yeah. be two different things going on. 
Um, because we know if Madison Lee's bag was found anywhere near where we found her phone. Uh, it it was. So she she looks at some notes in the file folder with all the information that she's collected, and she says, "Yeah, it looks like it was found in that general location." Maybe the phone had just been tamped down into the grass, or maybe somebody didn't notice it. But yeah, it looks like it was found near her grandmother's okay. grave. Um, if we go through Madison's handbag, is there anything in there that might be considered unusual, perhaps? Not or is unusual. It all just, no? No, just regular old lady stuff. Um, do you have a map of the cemetery at all, Miss Rodriguez? I do. Could we take a look? Okay, she pulls out the map. Yeah. Um, and so uh, Alex takes the sharpie out of his pocket, pulls the lid off, and he starts crosses putting crosses around where these missing people were, or the where the effects were found anyway. Okay. Yeah. So um, the people where effects were found, um, like actual objects were found of their having been present. Yeah. If you indicate all of those in Sharpie on the map, it looks like they're all within a certain range of the construction that's going on in the fountain. Okay. Um, so I draw a big circle around that fountain, connecting all of those kind of dots up. Uh, and then I start going through and doing the same thing with the ones that people, the effects weren't found, but we know the grave locations that they were sure. visiting. And I'll start doing that. So the same thing. doing that, what you end up with, and I mean, you can't see the full map on um, the no. table because I haven't thought to include a full map and we're kind of limited by the size of that tablet. No problem. But to give, to give you an idea, um, basically what you end up with is an arc. So kind of deeper into this memorial park and then kind of going in, if you line up all of the other missing persons, or at least the locations that they were visiting, you get kind of an arc. Like a horseshoe? Uh, not a full horseshoe, but definitely an arc. Um, all... so, and it's fairly smooth, right? Is it, or is it, so I'm just thinking um, about- once, once you indicate them all and kind of draw a line through them, yeah, it's yeah. pretty smooth. So I am, um... If we, t we took the construction as a central point and kind of draw, drew, if we were to draw lines out from that see what you're through saying. the arc, are they all roughly equal? Is it a, so what's is interesting it a... is for, for the, the part of the map on, for this part of the uh, cemetery, the memorial park, drawing a line kind of straight from those to where, where you would think the central kind of focus is the center yeah. of the circle as it were you don't get the construction area instead you get a little mound over here with a mausoleum a little on. Mound. oh okay so and she's uh looking at you kind of draw those lines in she's like yeah. oh that's that's the pope mausoleum the lumber people uh, yeah, Pope and Talbot, remember? I look at Jay. I think we could better take a visit. And I draw like... a big cross <laughs> across, the, <laughs> across the mausoleum. Where it's it's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is where it's like, it turns out it's like next to the mausoleum, but now we can't tell where because you've crossed out the, the second point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You get you get a text saying Sea Biscuit. <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy who the guy who owns Sea Biscuits here. Maybe that's where the horseshoe comes from. Oh no. Okay. It's absolutely not. But okay. <laughs> um, I, I'll just text back. Um, not far off. See you at. Uh, I'm, I'll meet you at the lumber guys. Label. And I don't write mausoleum because that would 
Yeah, it kind of, you know. <laughs> right. Dead house. Dead house. <laughs> Just saying, <basically. laughs> yeah. Me or the lumber guy. <laughs> okay. okay, cool. cool. All right, so if you are going to the lumber guy. Yeah. Not a euphemism, folks. Uh, why, why are my images not lining up the way they should? Uh, I had this not. all figured out before, and now it's all messed up, and I hate it. Yeah, well, stop looking, chat. That's all I'm saying. We'll let you know when you can look again. Yeah, hang on. Let's just take a second. Oh, uh, yeah. So, like, like, Sam rolls up in his clothes and goes, Well, I hope you guys ain't littering over here in these <laughs> grounds. <laughs> you think? Mm. Oh, you find Thomas Smith is a very diligent groundsman. Uh, Thomas Smith. All right. Hey, there we are. So Look at that. Oh, that's foreboding, isn't it? It is. And see. Yeah, that is. All right, so the Pope Mausoleum is uh, home to Alexander uh, Pope, as well as a lot of his family, of course. Um, what are you going to do when you get there? Is it, is it overseen by security cameras? I mean, as you as you kind of look up and around, yeah, you can see that there are some some cameras for sure. I mean, I don't know anything about <laughs> places like this. Can we just push the door open? Is that a thing? What's the so deal? It is, I think it's like a family key to get in and like. Um, well, e either you have to be family uh, and have the appropriate key, uh, and it is a key uh, in this case. There's a very large. Um, ornate lock on the door, or you know, you have to, to get the help of the groundskeeper. Which, if you're doing an investigation now, you should be able to do. You yeah. can't look in through the door, you can't get in through the door. You, think, or... you can look in through the door. Oh, I mean, okay. it's this is actually a tourist attraction a little bit in the cemetery. Like some of the tours that come through, this is one of the mausoleums that they stop at, uh, and you can see that there's indication that a lot of people have kind of milled around on the, the marble of the steps and kind of looked inside. Okay. Uh, I think we probably would have known that we'd need the key, right? So I could have you asked have. Rodriguez for that. Yeah, absolutely. And she... Uh, if she could get, it, get somebody to unlock it for us anyway. No. Yeah, she, she, um, go, she calls um, uh, Jeremiah uh, Bentley on the intercom, and he comes in a few minutes later. Uh, very mind. large man, and uh, he it's like, uh, do I have to go with them? Or she's like, well, I don't know, Jeremiah. Do you want to just give them the key? Yeah, he got something better to do, <laughs> Jeremiah. <laughs> He's like, it's Bentley to you, sir. It's fine. Let's go. So that'll be interesting. Um, as you, <laughs> as three of you walk over with Jeremiah Bentley and Sam, uh, seemingly meets you there. Well, potentially. Oh, yeah. yeah. Assuming he understood any of the messages. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think he's figured out Alex's typing skills by now. So, so the yeah, question I'm, is, it's, if Sam is outside the building and he sees these three heading towards the mausoleum, it's it's easy to spot Jeremiah. He's a big man, and of course, you know your your companions. Uh, are you going to walk up, or are you going to wait for Jeremiah to leave? I will probably take a discreet um, position behind a tree or okay. something until Jeremiah kind of moves on. So, <laughs> so yeah, he. Uh, he heads you guys over there and he unlocks the mausoleum. So and then he, How long you worked here, Jeremiah? Uh, well, worked here. I've, I've worked here for 15 years now at this point. No, I bet you've seen a lot of weird stuff by now. 
So <laughs> you can see that he he kind of he kind of sighs. It's like, <sighs> but also you get a sense that maybe it's a sigh of of resignation in that <laughs> everyone who's off yeah, him that he had <laughs> yeah have you but seen any nobody ghosts? takes him seriously oh okay okay and he says oh, you wouldn't believe me oh i wouldn't i wouldn't jump to that conclusion uh, try us yeah i mean there's a lot of weird stuff out there and a lot of it happens in this place. Anything weird like this happened before? You know, these disappearances? I think disappearances like these happen every, at least from my own research, every 50 years or so. Oh, you've looked into it? Yeah. You got an interest in the... Uh... <laughs> Supernatural, Jeremiah? I mean, sometimes you need to know what's out there so you can protect yourself and the people close to you. My dad used to be on the force. He ran into some weird stuff, told me about it. Um, if Jeremiah's actually out there, I might take the opportunity to slip back to the security office. Absolutely, do it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, yeah that's great actually okay so yeah continue I'm talking to jeremiah yeah i don't know it sounds pretty smart what you're doing there jeremiah to be honest yeah well haven't been able to help anybody yet you want to help people of course i do don't you why I'm doing what I'm doing. I have Jay here. Yeah, maybe all you need is someone who's willing to listen. Well, it's not that you've done more work on this than the rest. There's been some weird stuff on the, the feeds lately. And Sam is inside the security office. You get in there easy. <laughs> Sam is Sam is pretty... I assume being a, a, a one of the youths that Sam is pretty facile with computers. Uh, so it doesn't take you terribly long to access the feeds. Um, it's all, everything is, everything is logged in already. I mean, Jeremiah was logged in and he had no reason to log out considering it's in a secure room. Um, so you're able to pull up the uh, well. What days do you want to pull up? I mean, any. obviously, four p.m. three days ago, the last date that we had on the on the phone photo. Okay, that's the and only day that Sam will have so far, isn't it? Yeah. It will. Uh, and trying to find a camera that's aimed at Madison's mother's grave, I assume. Yes. Okay. So I guess it's some kind of like coverage map on the wall or something like that. So. I mean, you're able, I, there's only so many, right? You, you might have to flick through a few and, 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 or maybe you find a program that kind of links to a map. Sure. Um, so as you're doing that, Jeremiah continues and he says, uh, you know, we get our, we get our fair share of crazies out here at night. Sometimes, sometimes it's best not to even worry about them. They're not doing no harm. Kids playing at their fake rituals. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you run them off because maybe they got maybe they got alcohol with them. Maybe they got a weapon. One time, I think I may have even stopped a sacrifice. But then there's other things, shadows flitting about day and night. It's a weird, hazy thing. And so Cutting back to um, Sam, you find the right time. I'll give the description of the, the weird ghost grabbing um, Madison. 
So he grabs Madison. Uh, Sam can see this on the video. He grabs her, spins her around. She drops her handbag and her phone. And he's appears to be howling, screaming in her face. Uh, his mouth kind of distends and opens wider than it should. And you see uh, on the video, her eyes kind of roll back in her head and her head kind of lulls back. But then he releases her. And she, he dematerializes and she wanders off. Oh, <laughs> out of out of view of the, the video. The camera I track her on can I track her on other cameras. So before you start tracking her on other cameras, I will also note for you that this video segment is flagged. Um, I'm not a computer guy. I don't know how you would do something like that, but I'm assuming somebody can flag portions of a video on uh, a player. And so it's been flagged and you notice there are other flags on Ooh. some of the other videos, but you want to try and track her. So looking at the, the map layout and the cameras and kind of doing that, you are able to track her. So we'll come back to that. Back to Jeremiah and um, Alex and Jay. So Jeremiah continues and he says, sometimes there's weird stuff happening. There's a, uh, there's a shape that seems to prowl the cemetery. Um, never takes anyone, but sometimes people just get scared out of their minds. I've seen people faint and get up and leave. Uh, I've seen people wander off. Um, that, well, he doesn't know that you were, um, saying you're connected to Madison, so he wouldn't bring that up. No. But it, he's like, I, yeah, I've flagged several times. So these, um, these people who wander off, do they wander off in a particular direction or? They seem like they just leave. And so cutting back to Sam, as you track her through the cameras, you can see that she does just kind of walk towards the front of the cemetery and leave. And then you lose track of her. Of possession, maybe? Her, so her movements seem I normal? I text Alex. She just booked. I, she, not book isn't the right word. She meandered. She kind yeah, of just kind of like in a daze, rolled. just kind of wanders yeah, off. Yeah, kind of in a daze, really. Okay, so um, she's so far still alive. We just have to figure out what she is. Afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I, so, well, I mean, the director was saying that, um, you know, thirteen people have disappeared from the cemetery recently. Yeah. So, you've tracked, you've watched all of them. So, as it's happening, we've got um, yeah. Sam's like skimming through all the and, flags, and I imagine there's very similar things happening in all of them. The so, there's actually cowboys. two. There's actually two kinds of flags. There's green flags and red flags. The green flags, like the flag on Madison Lee, are all people that seem to be accosted by this spirit, and then wander off. The red flags are something else. Oh, um, all of the red flags within this portion of the park, which is the only part that Bentley is responsible for and probably has access to, um, are all people that it, you pull up the first video and I'll go to Jeremiah to have him describe it. Yep. He says a lot of the, the people I assume are okay. I've told Ortiz to check local hospitals and check the streets. Um, a lot of the people that are accosted by that weird, fuzzy, I want to say it, but maybe it's a ghost or a spirit. They wander out of the, the cemetery. They look dazed. Um, and I never see it happen in real time. So I can't, I can't do anything about it. By the time I see the videos, they're gone. But sure. those people are just out there. Um, 
maybe they've been picked up and taken to a hospital. Maybe they're just living on the streets now. I don't know. But the other ones that happened further out, deeper into the park, they're being taken. Um, have you seen most, something take them? I have. And I've given it to Ortiz. Um, these are always near closing time. This time of year, it's already getting dark at 8 p.m. I've tried to tell them that we should close the park. We should close the cemetery at sunset, but nobody listens to me. And the dark takes them, dark shapes, darkness. People are just paying their respects. The lights cut out and the cameras make out forms coming up, sometimes three or four, grabbing the people and, and just taking them. And let me get this and, straight. It's more than one form, is it? Yeah. Is it more than one? Yeah. And you don't see where they're taken. What, can you describe what happens when you see them being taken? Do they get... Like I said, these are almost always at full dark and the lights are cut before uh, the camera captures what happens. So I assume that these have to be people cutting the, the electricity to the light poles right before they do what they do. We repair them the next day and it looks like, yeah, they're just snipped. Okay. And that's what Sam sees is, you know, he sees a feed on one of the red flags of a lit scene. It's clearly night, but it's lit by one of the floods that they keep on until the Memorial Park closes for the people who are straggling. And there's uh, a younger man who is uh, uh, standing in front of a grave, appears to be weeping. His shoulders are kind of hunched and trembling. And the light cuts, they're not infrared cameras. So you still just, you can see shapes and forms, but you can't see detail. And you see some forms approach the figure who's now appears to be looking around and taking them um, out of frame. And if you try to track them with the cameras, they're gone. And these locations? Those are the ones that are the wider circle that tend to yeah. aim at the Pope mausoleum. OK. 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 Happy ass paper. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, then I'll, I realize that it is something that's coming out of the mausoleum. Which so, is causing problems. I realize have, yeah, the other is probably the mausoleum. Yeah. Let's have Jay and Alex while you're standing in front of the mausoleum and talking to Jeremiah, and he's getting ready to unlock the doors. Uh, why don't you guys give me some awareness rolls? Oh. Because I'm not very good at them. <laughs> That's fine. Um, come on. Six isn't bad. Oh, seven. Quite a success, though. Um, I'm going to spend a Let's point, spend will? A point of will. You're going to spend a point of will? Okay. I think to um, pass that one. Yeah, I think. So you notice as Jeremiah's unlocking the door uh, and kind of swinging it open, it's, it's, it's a wrought iron gate, and it appears to have some plexi that's been attached to the rear side of it. Okay, so, so maybe yeah, but they can like, see in, they can, like, and like yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. and you see maybe some indications of because it is a tourist attraction of some uh, not much because there are groundskeepers, but maybe you spot like a, a candy wrapper or something like that that somebody missed or a cigarette butt. Mm. 
But as he opens the door and the plexi has been there for a while, it's kind of foggy. Like you can still see through it, but you can tell it's been there for a few years. Probably needs to be replaced. Um, but as he opens, swings it open, you notice almost immediately that there are, and Jeremiah's not really looking because he's talking to you guys, but there are indications of people being in the mausoleum. Uh, oh. you, you spot a bottle, you spot some trash, uh, you also spot what appears to be locations where some candles have been burnt down to just puddles of wax. Okay. Uh, you're the only one with a key, Jeremiah, or does the family come here frequently and... Nobody from the uh, the Pope family has been here in a while. They'd have a key, though. And other than that, it's just you? Yeah. Well, I mean, the groundskeepers. Uh, well, the, the head groundskeeper specifically. But he wouldn't have any reason to use it unless somebody identified that something needs to be taken care of on the inside. How often does somebody come in here? Um, we tend to go in, uh, well, honestly, I can't tell you. That would be something the head groundskeeper would have to tell you. I don't know their schedules. I, we don't go inside security. And I'll just lift up one of the beer bottles off the side. And look at it. See what brand it is. Is it the kind of brand that kids would buy? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> right. No. In fact, it looks like probably a microbrew, like maybe somebody made it themselves. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll sniff it. Or something. Yeah. There's also these like candles that have been burnt down yeah. like, here and here. And... <laughs> so you bring that to Jeremiah's attention? Yeah, yeah, that's my intention. Yeah. yeah. To do that, but... It's like, what in the hell? He, he grabs his, his walkie. John, John, pick up. Yeah, have you been in the Pope Mausoleum? Somebody's got in somehow. The lock works. All right. So he puts his uh, walkie back on his belt. He's like, yeah, I don't know. Um, Groundskeeper's not been in. Is there anything left in the bottom of this? beer bottle i'm trying i'm trying to get an idea as to if it's been here for some time or whether it's just been a freebie yeah a few days <laughs> or something um i mean yeah there might be a little bit still in there okay so sniffing that um i mean it smells like beer i thought, yeah. I thought you were actually seasons with spirits <laughs> dun, dun, dun. um yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Can someone tell if beer's off? I reckon <laughs> Alex can because Alex is a drinker. No, I am. Okay. You know what? <laughs> Go ahead. Give me, uh, yeah. I don't know. What will we roll for determining whether or not beer's off? <laughs> um, um, science? I don't, that's weird. Science. Um, education? Uh, awareness. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, let's do awareness. Okay. That's fine. Uh, oh dear, come on. An eight. No. Okay. No, a uh, nine. Sorry. Okay. Um, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't sound like it's a uh, sound. <laughs> the beer doesn't sound like it's gone bad. It doesn't smell like it's uh, <laughs> any worse than whatever the microbrew it came out of. Um, so if you had to guess, it's still pretty recent it hasn't evaporated which okay yeah sign um i'll have a sip not dusty <laughs> there's a cigarette in it. <laughs> jeremiah does not look very pleased that you yeah. just drink some random beer that you found <laughs> he's like shakes his head um it, it doesn't your professionalism doesn't taste great doesn't taste awful yeah yeah, it's not been here that long. And the groundskeepers haven't been in in a while. Is that what you were saying? 
Uh, let me double check. John, when was the last time you were in the Pope Mausoleum? He's got to check the logs. Six months. Well, this isn't six months old. I can tell you that. Stick it on the side. Um, mm, is there uh, anything that Jay would be able to ascertain here, um, Lloyd, in terms of... Diff around, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and give me another awareness check for Jay. Or do you want to encourage Jeremiah to leave so you can shift and use your enhanced doggy form? Yeah, let's. I mean, I maybe me try and... Oh, that's good. Ten. Yeah. So the first thing you spot as you are taking now inside and you're taking a closer look around, the first thing you spot is kind of in the center of the floor, um, central to where it looks like the candles would have been burned. In fact, is a horseshoe set in the floor. And did Sam carved... mention that to us at all? Did he ever Did you, Sam? That? Did you mention yeah. the horseshoe? Okay. I, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have had it back. So, yeah, uh, and carved into the, it is marble, of course, the flooring, carved into the marble in, in very distinct uh, in, in clear, bold letters is the word decidedly. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to argue. Uh, aside horseshoe. from that, uh, and the fact that it looks like the candles have been burnt in a circle around the, the horseshoe itself, you don't really see anything else. I mean, again, you might spot a couple more items of uh, detritus, as it were, of, of the I mean, This doesn't look like some kids have been in here and had a little bit of a party does it that's that's not is that the impression we're getting um no i the the bottle aside you feel like somebody yeah. might have, have just of some kind yeah oh. like this looks more ritualistic to you and maybe somebody just brought a drink with them yeah but okay um i uh, Actually, let's have Alex make a lore check now that I'm thinking about it. Just need to check what my lore is. Uh, ooh, it's a two. Come on. Way. 13. Oh, 13. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So with the positions of the candles around the horseshoe uh although there's no like there's no lines or anything that you can see if you if you let your brain just kind of superimpose potential lines over the positions of the candles yeah uh it looks like they would if you connected them make some kind of mystical symbol um so definitely ritualistic, okay. uh, not, not like a pentagram necessarily, right. but you know what I mean? Like if you kind of lined up all the points and just kind of imagined a line connecting yeah, all yeah. of them. Yeah. Um, and, and I'll kind of say that, and I, I, Alex would know what the symbol is called, I guess. Um, and sure. I'll just kind of say uh, to Jay, and he's saying that right out in front of Jeremiah as well. Um, it's uh, such and such, and I'll be, I'll be tracing the line with my finger so that Jay can see. Uh, what I'm doing. I mean, I'm doing this like completely professionally as if we really work like, right, as if something like that. As, yeah. <laughs> so Jay, I would say taking a closer look and with the role that you made earlier, noticing the lines, you do definitely smell um, sulfur. So it's possible the lines may have been connected by some type of sulfurous powder um, that has been blown away at some point or or swept away um hmm. but none of the lines i should point out none of the lines bisect 
the uh, the horseshoe. Is the horseshoe central to the actual symbol? It is. It's in the right center. In the center. Yeah. Okay. Does that mean? What does it mean? Do we? Do I have any idea what, or understanding what the symbol represents that we're looking at here? Is it like uh, yeah. So, especially with that thirteen, I would say the symbol. You're getting the sense that the symbol represents opening. Ooh. Okay. Well, this looks like uh, it looks like some kind of gateway. Um. Are you saying uh, that out loud in front of Jeremiah? I, I'm kind of because I think that Jeremiah is kind That's of fine. already in on this, right? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Jeremiah might be what some would call a clued in mortal. Yeah. Um, so he's like a gateway to where? I don't know. Maybe we can find out. So I, kind of, I guess I kind of roll up. And I can see now they're inside, and they're and they're looking around just like ritual circles. Things. Oh, okay. So we're we've moved to there now, have we? <laughs> okay, <laughs> we so you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're gonna you're gonna walk in. So Jeremiah turns, feeling somebody enter the mausoleum. He's like, Smith, what are you doing here? Thomas Smith, necromancer. <laughs> <laughs> Necro. What? Hey, don't worry about it. He's one of us. Oh, so, so I think Pope, Pope is rising from his grave each night and devouring um, innocent visitors and uh, his minions. And it, why is there a beer bottle? I mean, yeah. Did you bring a beer bottle? <laughs> with well, we started too well. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, uh, this is uh, I, I, like I said. He's one of us. Uh, tends towards the melodramatic, maybe, um, but. Uh, but to be honest, he's probably the only one that might actually be able to open this thing for us. Oh, we've got uh, a gate. we got a gate. Okay. So if you think that there is a gateway to a, uh, another realm here, mm -hmm. assumingly a ghost realm rather than a fey realm, yeah. um, you're going to have to to do some research and take some time. Uh, it's not something you just... You just do. Okay. Um, so if you would like to do so, uh, Jeremiah, trusting you three now as having listened to his stories and taken him actually seriously, he gives you the key to the mausoleum. And he wow. says, look, I, I can't oh, do anything dude. here. I'm going to head back to the security office. Just, just bring me back the key when you're done. Um, um, sure. I mean... This might take a. This might not, might take a bit of time. It, I mean, we might have to spend a couple of days on this. He Do gives you. you his, we... He gives you his phone number. Okay. He's like, yeah, no okay. trouble. If you're if you're gonna put an end to this, uh, even if Rodriguez doesn't like what you're doing, I'll I got you. Sure. Thanks, Jeremiah. Thanks, <clears throat> So, what are we going to do? Do we want to do some research? Do we want to stay here and wait around? I think we're going to have to go do some research. Uh, do, some, do some yeah. research about this symbol for a start and see whether we can figure out a way of opening this gate. Okay. Um, I don't so, know what we're talking about. This, this, symbol, <laughs> this symbol is like carved into the marble. Is it like as part of design? Oh, no, no. This is something that okay. people are adding on top of it. It was yeah. um, drawn in sulfur, right? The yeah. The whole symbol. Either used with some word... powder or some kind of sulfurous, yeah. like, chalk, maybe. And the word was, and the word was decidedly. decidedly. It sounds like, a Puritan, sounds like a Puritan name. Yeah. You think it's My name is decidedly turn it. Safe. If you, if you want to do, if you want to, like, open a web browser, you can find that very quickly. Yeah, let's uh, do that. Decidedly is actually the name of a horse that uh, ran and won the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. When was that? Uh, well, let me call it the page. I mean, is it, is it um, recent or? 1954. 
1954. So it was the horse was owned by one of Pope's um, descendants, and uh, they liked it so they liked the horse so much that uh, they you know Buried kept it. one of its shoes and inlaid it into the uh, the tomb. I thought you were going to say Wait, so did someone tried to interred in the mausoleum. Did someone try to resurrect <laughs> the horse and end up summoning some kind of demon? It's not interred there, um, but as you do some deeper research and and something that uh, might not be found easily by well yourselves as players on the internet because uh, I just made this part up. <laughs> uh, decidedly, apparently, died at the stroke of midnight. Of old age, champion racehorse that gives us a time. Oh, hi! I mean, we, yeah, why would we want to summon? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Well, so, 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 so not to summon it. I think someone else tried to summon it. Why would you sign summon a horse ghost? I don't know. We like to. Oh, oh, cowboy, 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 cowboy was a horse. I, I, that's a stretch. You, you um, didn't see him. You didn't see him, did you? Did you? Um, Jay, you saw him. He's a bit of a lame cowboy, to be honest. Well, the lame cowboy really without a horse. Well, if we need to, if we need to wrangle a ghost horse, we can, we can call Do him you, a ghost cowboy. Anybody want to make some lore checks? I think so. Yeah. I think we need to be um, trying to figure out. I, I, I mean, there's obviously some kind of connection with a horse. I mean, I don't see why anybody would be trying to. Seven, Someone that's what a, a horse spirit. That's three. Ten, Ten for three. Sam? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, um, yeah. In fact, let's do the. Oh, Jay did good. Ooh, and Ten. Alex did good. Yeah. yeah, but you still did fine. Um, yeah, so. I'll give it to Jay too, just because Jay is more naturally inclined. Yeah. Even though it's not necessarily war or, or uh, lore, rather, um, horses uh, in just about every culture have been a beast of transportation and symbolize transportation. So a symbol of opening, a symbol of transportation. Uh, okay. Not real horse. Traveling between realms, as it were. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so it's it's the gate. We need to it's the gate thing we need to focus on. Yeah. How we how we open this horse gate? Well, I figure that's like, your that's your wheelhouse, isn't it? Well. So, I mean, you yep. did you have rolled pretty high on your lore, and you do have necromancy. You would know that ghost realms are not something that generally you intentionally open. <laughs> How do we unintentionally open it then? <laughs> well, no, it's most of the lore of ghost realms is people just accidentally like wandering into oh, them. Into it. Um, in fact, the more you guys spend, we'll assume you spent like the rest of the day doing some research, I guess, and, and maybe into the next day. The more you spend researching it and, and the more Sam thinks about it with regards to his, his necromancy, the well, more you're... If, if, if it gets dark, obviously until the next day, I think we should take a wander out to where the abduction area was. Because... Oh, in case they want to... The same night or you going up. the next day? I think once it gets dark, well, we're, we're, we're working more than the museum until it gets dark, and then kind of like camp out. I mean, oh, no. I, I, I assume I, I, maybe I, you guys left to do some research. I, like, well, I'm doing thinking, research oh, requires okay, libraries. Yeah. I mean, if Sam was to suggest that, I, would, I think Alex is definitely going to be. Um, I would rather. I, I think we should <laughs> figure out. Get some more yeah, I, I, I was we thinking start. we were just going to be like using yeah. those phones oh, and, the oh, no. and, and the cafe, but yeah. And, yeah. and going, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not all internet stuff. And going with the way that you guys uh, kind of have been role-playing your characters, one of the things that we haven't quite covered in this uh, uh, one shot, but it is kind of interesting, is that 
you know, you have a hideout, right? You have a hangout where the crew hangs out. Yeah. One of the aspects when you actually play the full game and you create characters is that you also get to decide on some benefits for your hideout. And oh, so we could have like, you could have have like an arcane library, right? Oh, that that right. you can like study. Uh, or like a laboratory where you can do like testing of things. And it's kind of cool because when you, you make your characters individually, uh, I mean, obviously if we're making characters, we would hopefully do it all together. But then once you've made your characters, each of you gets to decide on something that your hideout has yeah, right? Uh, as cool. a part of that. So yeah, I would imagine you guys probably have a library of some kind with, uh, especially with uh, Alex and, and Sam being what they are. Yeah. So yeah, you would have to leave to access that, engage with okay. it. Um, so I'm going to say not the same night you wouldn't be able to get over there, but maybe the next night, um, yeah, that, that conclude like your that. research and get out there. Um, but anyway, as I was saying, by accessing your, your kind of more arcane library and with, with Sam and Alex kind of working together and looking at the symbol, you really get the sense that the symbol of opening that, that Alex identified is really just kind of like set dressing. Like it's, it's something that somebody saw somewhere in a book one time and was like, Oh, that's kind of cool. I wonder if that would work. Okay. And so you're getting the sense that these aren't actual real practitioners as it were. But it's somebody um, that knows, right? It's somebody that knows that there's something about that place. Correct. Um, so in Sam's research, you get the sense that it's not so much that they put a symbol of opening there. It's that they're probably, they stumbled onto the right time. Mid and if, if exactly, right? <laughs> So at so, midnight, this okay. We may it, it, this this gateway potentially opens and, and may allow access. Is that is that? Yeah, the, potentially. Um, Ghost realm gateways, like if they're tied to time, I would say Sam, possibly. Well, all three of you actually, possibly. I would imagine Jay might have some experience with this as well. Uh, with maybe with Fey portals as well. They're very similar in that way. Sometimes if they're connected to a time. It, you don't need anything else. You just have to be there at the right time. Now, whether or not that it's that time every day or every week or every three days or every 50 years, it's hard to say. Okay. So we can now check the eight people that disappeared. Uh-huh. What? Day. Well, half, of them, no, half of them no, wandered no, off. Midnight, was it? There wasn't at midnight when they were disappearing. No, no, no. no. Half, half of them wandered well, they were, off during they were the taken. daytime. I think he's speaking specifically about the other ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, they were all taken after dark. Okay. But not quite at midnight. At midnight. What day? Does that matter? Three days apart. Each of them. So. The last one of those that disappeared that way, how many days ago? Uh, you could call Jeremiah, I have a check. Yeah, I, I, so yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Call him up. It, uh, I don't know, it, maybe it's at stupid o'clock at night as well. <laughs> it doesn't matter, he picks up. Yeah. Like if you're um, calling him at two in the morning, he picks up. Yeah. Uh, and Jeremiah, once he recognizes, yeah. yeah, once he recognizes a few, uh, he instantly has that information. Like he's been tracking it specifically. <laughs> um, and he tells you that, yeah, the last one was taken five days ago. But so tomorrow, that gateway is going to open. Actually, is that midnight? Tonight or midnight? It would be it would be the next day after yeah. your research. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. 
So then yeah. I guess the yeah. So 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 we know this. We think it's a time based gate. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Did our, our research show us how you close time based gates? Um, no, but you do know that once you enter a ghost realm, it's not always quite so easy to yeah, leave. No. Um, however, since you were doing research on it, uh, the additional information that you have may point to an exit once you're inside. Okay. Um, you know that decidedly won the race in, in what was it you said, 1954? 54, yeah. Um, you know that decidedly was a racehorse. I, I, yeah, you, Jay, you got you got to race the horse, Jay. You got you got you got to beat the horse in a race. <laughs> you can do it. I believe in you. All right. So, what do we want to do? Okay. Well, first, we, we should start. probably take our next break, shouldn't we? Sure. All right. So. What's the plan? It is it is right. a new Nightfall, day. We turn up. Yep. Oh, Maybe yeah, getting yeah, a yeah. little bit of rest, done some yeah, research. Yeah. You have, I think, some ideas about midnight and the mausoleum being important. Yep. Yeah. So what's your plan? We think there's some kind of gateway in the in the mausoleum that opens every three days at midnight. Um, and I think how do the I kids get the? I mean, it's probably, it's probably not relevant, but how do the kids get the key to get into that's the somebody there? else? That's somebody else that just knows that there's a gateway there and was trying to open it. And I think that's more a case of yeah, just somebody pissing about rather than um, rather uh, than the seat, actually doing one of the groundskeepers. Probably just make around. I, I it could be, could be, could be just Picked. yeah. Also, both of you would know there are magics that can open locks. You might not know them, but no. Has the um, has the kids come back to me by the way on my phone about the about oh yeah the death you're feeling money. Um, it that would be today, wouldn't it? So during the day, uh, oh. he does right. he does okay. text you, and uh, he says, uh. Yo, that uh, that long dark dude came and saw me, gave me some more money. Ask him what he what what did he want from it? He gave him some more money for what? Or just to keep checking up on. He just wanted to know if she was if she was home yet. He knows something so, about this. Oh, they go. And and was she? If he checks. Nah, she ain't home. Do it home. And did he say he'd come back again in a couple of days' time? No, not this time. Yes, we've got. Has he just left? Yeah, has he, has he literally just left? Um, he's like, yeah, he just left, but I, uh, I took a picture of him. Oh, send it, send it, send it. <laughs> he sends you the picture. It's uh, it's Jeremiah. Oh, ah, yeah, of course. Although I, I, I was expecting I the old guy in his thirties. That's the inscription we got. Yeah, okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. That's a lot of money to be given to a kid just to knock on the door. And bear in mind, he's probably doing it for all the other kids. People he's head, of, he's head of security for one of the largest memorial yeah. parks in the right. county. I'm in the wrong job. Sam. <laughs> you don't have a okay. fucking job, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> that so, piece of bike thing is not yours. <laughs> <laughs> so before, uh, before night falls, do you want to ask Jeremiah about that? or I think we should. I think okay. we should ask. Yeah. In person, um, or just gonna give him a call. In person. You also might want to. Yeah, we can. 
We can you also over. might want to let them know that you're going to get into yeah, We're going to be, yeah, we're going to be there right now, right? Right, yeah. Well, I think we should probably go over there and let the director know as well. That would be... Uh, yeah, so they're like you to like, tase us on site or anything. Yeah, we don't want any of that malarkey. All right, so your interview with the director is is very quick and she's very dismissive she's whatever is fine just speak to jeremiah um she she doesn't care just as long as you get things figured out um jeremiah ushers you all into a conference room uh and says uh so uh what's going on um why are you getting that kid to check on Madison Lee's house? I've been trying to track some of the people that have gone missing, but not taken. Okay. I'm hoping that maybe they'll just return home at some point. So that, that, they, uh, you, you've obviously seen the footage. Because you marked in the first place. Yeah. Did you recognize that dude? What dude? The dude that keeps coming out of the graves and scaring people off. I think it's the been a spirit? bit. spirit? Like, I, it, it was blurry. It was fuzzy. I... Yeah, it was indistinct for him. I guess uh... at least you saw it because you were closer up. You haven't, to got, it, you haven't got the sight. <laughs> uh... <laughs> so there's like. All right, okay. So. Look at you, sight shaming. <laughs> don't hit the player um, so okay so they're moving this fountain yeah whose other than graves have they had to move to, to make that happen none that I know of okay 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 and it's going to sound pretty weird but <laughs> we've got the distinct impression that uh, some folks were I uh, might pissed off about about that fountain. And when I say folks, I'm talking about people that um, aren't necessarily walking around here anymore. Well, I, people have lived in these parts for longer than the cemetery's been here. I guess it's possible somebody might have been interred there before this was actually a graveyard. Maybe their grave has been disturbed. Mm. Mm, I mean, you know, shit, shit happens. There's not really a lot we can do about that. Sorry, this is a red um, herring, maybe. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, cool. So, 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 so we've solved the mystery of the man with the hood. You're obviously visiting all of these guys, giving kids money to check up on them. All of them I've been able to, yeah. Madison Lee was the only solid lead I had yeah, on, on somebody who had survived. An encounter, as it were. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I'm pretty certain she's she's going to come back. Um, just a little bit dazed and and hungry. I, she, I just hope she's keeping her fluids up. So, so um, what? Yeah. Is there anything else I can help you on? We're going to be. Spending the night here. Um, you know that gateway thing that we were talking about? Yeah. Figured out how it opens. So, um, speaking of which, you can keep that key. I had John make me another. Oh. Oh, that's great. Um, cool. Thanks, Jeremiah. All right. I'll, uh, I'll let the, the night watch know that you'll be here and that you're not to be disturbed. Do you want them to avoid the area or? I think just for their own safety, I think they should probably, yeah, definitely avoid the area. All right. And, and you know, I, I know there's, like, uh, there's been resistance from the director, but maybe just for tonight, lock the gates um, after dusk. We always do. I mean, I think, I think it means when. Before, before it gets dark. Oh, I see. It's there's people hanging know. around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want anybody yeah, hanging around after dark, I think, is what Sam is trying to tell you. I, I don't know that I'm going to be able to push that issue. Uh, that'll bring attention. Maria doesn't want that. 
Alex can do it. He knows the unit to direct, so he gets on well with her. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just just thought, just for one night, close a couple of hours early. You know, you got a it's a personnel issue. You haven't got you got too many people calling the sick to cover it. I don't know. It's not like it's a, a vital infrastructure worry. service, is it? It's just it's a graveyard. You gotta make it today. You come the next day. Well, uh, well, we'll see if we can do something you, about it. Do you think the issue is going to happen before we close at eight? No, I think the issue is going to happen when it gets dark, and there may still be people hanging around. We just don't want to take any chances, yeah. and you know what? Neither do you. Yeah, that's true. Okay. You can, you, can think, you can think of a reason. There's reasons for, for parks to close early. Yeah, let me, I'll go speak. Time. I'll go speak. Okay. okay. So he, um, he walks you over to her office. And... Yeah. I'll knock on the door. Uh, uh, come in. Oh, for, I told you to speak to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, yeah. what are you doing? Hey, you lay off Jeremiah. He's a good guy. Listen, uh, we're going to need to lock the gates before it gets dark. Uh, Why? You've got, because you've got some construction work going on over by the fountain thing, and uh, there may be a health and safety issue. So you're going to close the park. You're going, so to close, she... the, you're going to close the cemetery before it gets dark today. Make a uh, charm roll. Charm? I haven't got any charm. Oh, intimidation, was not it? Uh, no, actually, for you, this would be rhetoric, and you're actually trying to get her to do something. Oh, the words that bind. You're arguing that with her, yep. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to gain a plus two to rhetoric when trying to maneuver someone into making a promise. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, so I got a rhetoric with plus four. Nice one. To see what happens. Come on. Oh, look 13. At that. Yeah. Huge. Uh, so, yeah, you, you skillfully uh, maneuver her with your talk of health and safety, but also you can see that she's kind of thinking. It looks like she's doing some math in her head about maybe when some of the abductions occurred and she was like, Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that we don't admit anyone after, uh, say six. That and sounds perfect. I'll have security go around and make sure that everyone vacates by full dark. That's great. Thanks, Julie, or whatever your name was. Maria. Maria. Maria that was Rodriguez. It. I didn't write it down, sorry. Yeah, that's fair. We're now called Julie. That's yeah. It. So um yeah, so you get that set up. Uh what's your plan then? Um do we well we gotta wait. Um we'll hang around. We don't have to hang around outside, do we, until... We bought, we bought, we bought, we bought dinner, didn't we? Yeah, we bought lunch. Yeah, yeah. We brought food. Picnic. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, do, we, do, you, do you want to eat inside the mausoleum? That's probably a bit. Yeah, that kind of... respectful, to be honest, but I'm sure... So, this particular mausoleum isn't quite as large as some of the other mausoleums on the, the property. It's because mm. it's, it's very old and they didn't build them just kind of monstrously big. Um, it does have, and you can kind of see it in the picture there. It does have two short wings, yeah, uh, to either side of the main entry, and then it goes back a distance. Um, so I, there's, is it, is, is it got is, like, is it got like drawers really where the family members are? Or are they... It it does have the vaults, yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, but they're all sealed. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, there's, there's not really, my point is there's not really any place to hide inside. So if you're thinking of being in there while someone's going to come in and use the place, that's um, maybe not the best idea. Um, no, I mean, I, I don't want think an immediate, uh, I mean, 
We can watch the CCTV though, can't we? You can. So we're going to eat in the. We'll sit in the security office then that night. All of we'll you. We'll be watching. Is there the room for all of us? No, I mean, no, that. that's not the point. Just, the study, so. But yeah, I just wanted to see if anybody wanted to do anything else. Yeah, I don't know. I think we might want to hang out at the actual time, just in case there are any stragglers. Yeah, you know, by the fountain. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. It's, then we'll, it's, we'll... Gonna, it's gonna take you a few minutes at a run to get from the security office to okay. the mausoleum. All right. So we, yeah, we're gonna go out and hang out near I mean obviously the this ghost appeared and and, and rushed uh Jay and, and Sam earlier. Yeah. Well maybe so, we can talk maybe we can talk to him and find out what yeah, how long he's we'll, we'll hang around that, in that area, I think, maybe. Uh for oh, a bit. Okay. Um yeah, sitting on graves. Smoking, drinking beer and stuff. Do you want to try and call out to them? Sam, you've seen him. I don't know his name, but um, yeah, I've seen him. I've engaged with him. Let's, let's see if I can find out who he is and what he's doing. Um, well, I, mean, I know roughly he's, how old he looks. He's going to be 10. Okay. Oh, but I should, also note that, I should note that all of you had a night's nice rest, so you're going to get D6 willpower back. Oh, okay. I got the one that I spent. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Three. Three for Sam. I mean, I could lay low as in wolf mode. You could. Yeah, then like Ooh, yeah. if you think and if you wanted to, as crazy as it might sound, you could also inform uh, uh, Jeremiah to inform his staff. Uh, there's going to be a dog on the premises. There will be a dog on the premises for you know investigative purposes. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like bush trucking away the stash. Yeah, so I get <laughs> how we sell that to Jeremiah. I think is is that we're we're going to have a dog uh, with us. Dogs, as you know, very sensitive to the supernatural. Um, and so I'm going to tell them the truth. Uh, no, we're not. Not by Jamie and a wolf. Okay. No, that's we're definitely not going to tell him that. No. So he's like, far. all right, what kind of dog? Are we talking like a big dog? Like a, yeah. like a shepherd? Yeah, it's a real big dog. Okay. It's really uh, friendly, yeah. though. All right, I'll let everybody know. Alamuto or whatever. Like, they're sort of like wolfish dogs. Yeah, yeah. Um, do keep in mind, while you're in wolf form, you're not going to be able to communicate with Alex and Sam, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you want to, if if you want to stash your your clothing somewhere, or or maybe stuff it into a sack and give it to Alex, like a backpack or something, and you know, take wolf form, that'll be fine. Yeah, I was just thinking like once it once it's closed up, we just stash it in like a gym bag and like. Text around the back because like the people that are coming aren't going to be like looking all around. They probably want to be focused on getting into the sure. The, uh, 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 do you do you want to go so far as to to tell his staff that the dog will be is well trained and is roaming the grounds looking for things? Is that what we want to do? Yes, we'll say they're well trained. I think we're going to say sure. they're well trained. Yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, you always put a wild dog, dog and just release it. Like, a dog has a handler, but in this case, considering who you are, so if if that's the message you're trying to send to him, he peeks an eyebrow and he's like, "Oh, all right," and he kind of looks at the three of you, trying like he's trying to figure something out. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, he lets it go and he informs the staff. He's like, "There's going to be a large." Working dog, uh, roaming the premises. Do not engage with it. Do not try to interact with it. Stay out of its do way. Get, do we have to get like a special harness that says like you know, "working <laughs> no. dog" or something? No. <laughs> do not disturb. Yeah, no. he's like it's it's fine. We've had strays get into the the uh the property before and and you know dogs can be dangerous so everybody's told not to engage with them 
I'll just inform them not to call animal control. Yeah. 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 yeah so, we wouldn't want that. So while we sniff around, as you say, I will probably yeah, engage with the, or attempt to engage with the cowboy ghost. Yeah. So uh, difficulty is going to be 10. Uh, yeah, 10. Because you have seen him, you know he's present. Yeah. Okay, I get plus five, so. Got it. Yep, that's it. That's 12 or 11, I think. It's fine. Were you doing this like during the day, kind of near the construction site, or are you wait until everybody's out of the park? Uh, probably wait until they start closing down and chasing everyone out. Okay, cool. So, yeah, you. Um, Assuming in that general area, though, up where the construction is yeah. happening. Okay. Yeah. So it, it's a few minutes, but you sense you've made a connection. And eventually he does kind of show up and he does not look happy. <clears throat> hey, there, dude. What do you want, bone caster? Why the long face? And I laugh at my own joke. Oh, because the other so, picture, yeah. At this point, I do like that. But at this point, Mark, you can't, can't see him. him. Yeah. Yeah. He hasn't materialized. Gotcha. I can just hear his voice. Or can I just see him? You no can see him. You can okay, see him. Fine. Insta. <clears throat> You've been, uh, been popping yourself up in, uh, in, in broad daylight, uh, scaring off. Little old ladies and other visitors. What's, what's, what's the deal with that? Just trying to get people away from my property, get them off my lawn, as it were. Yeah. Okay, so this used to be like your lands? It is my land. What are you talking about used to be? <laughs> well, it's to me like you uh, forfeited all claim to it when you uh, decided to go boots up. Son, I don't know. I mean, if there's a lot ever, of guys. Son, I don't know if you've ever lived on and worked a piece of land for your entire life, but I ain't given nothing up. Yeah. Okay. So why, 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 why in the last few weeks have you decided to to show you show yourself? Is it a fountain? The fountain been they've been digging for the fountain. And they've disturbed your bones. Hell yeah, they did. Yeah. Okay, okay. So what Round them up, ain't nothing left. Ah. Okay, so what can we do then to uh, put you at rest and stop you scaring people off? Don't know. What can you do? What can? Good question. I mean, who did you piss off? What's your, what's your unfinished business? Uh, what's, are you going up or down? What's going on here? Son, I don't, I don't know what dime novels you've been reading, but I ain't got no unfinished business. These people are on my land. They destroyed my body, and I ain't happy about it. What's he saying, son? He's not a happy guy, Alex. He's not a happy guy. Well, of course he's not happy. He's dead. Yeah. yeah. That's to really sour the mood. He's like, now well, what I did you... I ain't got what do no you actually problem. do these people then? What do you actually do these people then? Because we, because we've seen, we've seen picture books of picture books of, of of people, and they like their eyes go up and then they wander off. And what's what's all that about? Tell them to get off my property. That's all I do. And go where? Uh... I don't care where they go. I tell them to get off my property. <laughs> now, son. Okay, I... I... I ain't got no problem with you and your little dog friend and your little spirit guide. I ain't got no problems with any of you. You can leave and you can go on about your business. Okay, so how, what's, what's your property? What's your, what's your definition of your property? Where are you? you, where are you, where are you? Oh, no, okay, okay, okay. You want me to get my surveying tools out, son? I ain't going to do that. Yeah, barbed wire fence. Okay, all right, fine. Uh, See so what make, what you need make, to do. Make an empathy check. Uh, 
and, and six. So that's not enough. I'm not empathetic. Do you want to I'd spend some will? I oh, know, because something horrible is going to happen. And I'm going to need it for that. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a distraction. This is just a resource sink. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. Well, we know you're there. Stop it. Because you're scaring, because when you send people to go away, it's coming to people like us. And we're like, we're like, we're like low level. Yeah. More people start going missing, not turning up. It's going to come high level. And you're going to get the priests in with their crosses and their holy water and their salt. And, you know, whatever you're dreading going to in the, in the pastures of the afterlife. Okay. Make a charm check for, for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, that is a seven. That is also not a success. But it's a will. You worry about oh, yourself. I'll spend one will. Yeah, I'll spend one will. Okay. One will. Go okay. On, okay. One will. Go, go. Then he says, <laughs> look, I'll, I'll stop yelling at folk, but you got to tell them to stop messing around with my land. What do you mean messing around oh, with they, it? I mean, or they, gotta, or they gotta pay tribute or something. Right, tribute. Right. What does tribute look like to you? I mean, he doesn't have a monument. They destroyed his body. Okay. What's your name? Oh, right. I guess I should have that up, shouldn't I? Because I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> yeah, they're going to dedicate have... this goddamn fountain to him. That's what they're going to do. The unknown cowboy. Name is Josiah Lynch. Josiah Lynch. Fine. Well, we will make sure, Josiah Lynch, that you get acknowledgement of the great work that you put into this land. Wait a um, minute. That's what this is all about? Yeah. I would seem like I can hear Alex. I, I yeah, yeah. It, right? yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. We will get That's that done. What and that, about. Yeah, uh-huh. we, will, we will get that promise from the director. We will... I don't know if we're going to get, we'll get like a monument or we'll get like a, the fountain named after you or like a little mini happened. stable or Jesus something Christ. like that. We'll sort it out. Fine, I'll calm down for that. now. <laughs> right. Okay. Thank you. So you've, you've dealt with Josiah Lynch. Let's, uh, yes. what, what are we, uh, what are we doing then for the, uh, coming up on the end here, the final confrontation as it is. Yeah. And the mausoleum and, and waiting for the requisite time. Wait for midnight or just before or whenever it is. <laughs> so if everybody is within, pardon me, view of the mausoleum come uh, close to midnight, you do see um, four, no, five. No, there's a sixth Ooh. forms kind of materialize out of the darkness and they are dragging a seventh who's got a bag over their head. Um, dragging a seventh? Yeah. By the arms. Is that- kind of kicking a little bit. Okay. Do we uh, right, well. What's that? The seventh? Do we recognize the seventh person? Oh, they've got a bag over their head. Oh, the clothes are they? Are they like groundskeeper Modern. clothes? Are they regular clothes? If we, if we imagine any of the people we've seen previously with a bag over their head, do they look similar? They do. Yeah, same bag. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> are these? I mean, do these look like normal? Just normal people in robes? Uh, in dark like clothing, and a couple of them are wearing like kind of cloaks or robes. Yeah, but they're all kind of contemporary clothes. Okay. But it's all dark. Um, Probably the only person who can see them well enough if he's keeping an eye on the the mausoleum is oh wait, no, none of you have night sight. That's the uh the vampire. Oh, so you can see the forms heading in and they're they're fighting with somebody who's struggling. They're going into, into the mausoleum. mausoleum. Yep. Okay. We'll rush over towards the mausoleum, I guess then. Well, well, hang on, what's our what's our what's the engagement? What what? <laughs> <laughs> What are we doing? Are we, are we, are we, are we saying we're, we're okay to kill them because they're killers? Are we saying, what's, what, what's uh We don't know if they're killers yet. Okay, well, I, mean, I think yeah, we can't. Yeah, yeah. six, the six of them. You're getting ahead of yourself a little bit there, Sam. Oh, hey, Jay, so we, we need to get the upper hand. 
Well, you guys, if you want to go in. No, I'm I'm saying that. I'm just saying, Shay, will you go and have a look? (laughs) While you guys are having that heated conversation, how close are you to the mausoleum and the people who might hear you? I think we're pretty close. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, it's, yeah, it's I think it's loud hit. To, yeah, and we want to kind of. We, I don't think it's funny if they hear us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we are, As we're arguing. We're, what the hell are you talking about? Rules of engagement. <laughs> I don't know. Are we going to kill them? I don't know. Are we going to kill them? <laughs> so you hear somebody <laughs> saying, there's somebody out there, and the door is slammed closed on the mausoleum. Okay. Well, good job we got a key. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, we're going to go under over to the mausoleum. They've got someone in there. Yeah, They're going to I mean, The cultists probably thought they'd want like some nuts to stumble across them. Yeah. <laughs> so they, um, I mean, they they know that there's security on the grounds at night. So maybe they just thought you're yeah security yeah. guard walking past. Um, well, I'm I'm, I'm going to go in and take and try and take as many hours as possible to get their numbers down. So <laughs> six people. It's time we've got, a, we've got a werewolf with us. Yeah. Um, so when you say you're going to take down as many people as possible, everyone else is going to take down as many people as possible. Yeah, yeah. I got, I got, I got, say, I got, I got, I got boy. I got, um, I got skills. I got skills. Yeah. So you do see some flickering lights lighting up inside. Okay. Uh, okay, I, I think we're going to walk up. We're going to walk up to this 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 door. I, I, and the rest of you, um, yeah. Is this something that yeah. Jay wants to do different, or are we are we just going? to... I think we just go in and we we it's kick the door down boys. and go, "Oi, what's going on?" <laughs> All right. Okay. So if you're going to open the doors, um, yeah. they're not locked, so you could kick them open if you wanted to. Uh, no, we're just going to push them open. Okay. Yeah. See, so I, you, I see what, what are we catching them doing? Are they like got a big knife over someone yeah. about to go and like kill no, them? No, so what you see when you push open the doors... Is it a sex thing? Sorry. Probably, just to be dramatic, let's see, say that you hear from one of the, the churches, the many churches in town and the cathedrals that are on the cemetery grounds, you hear the first strike of midnight. Ooh, okay. You open the doors, no attempts at being stealthy. No. And what you see is the candles lit in the same places as the, the wax uh, kind of stains where you see um, six figures in dark clothing. Um, one of them is holding a book and reading some Latin that to Alex, who has some kind of, you know, connection to that kind of magic just sounds like gibberish um <laughs> and the other uh four of the other ones are just kind of in what you would consider to be stations around the circle each of them is holding some kind of like ritualistic item that like doesn't make sense to you in, in terms of where they're standing and what they're holding the sixth person is kind of holding the individual who still has a bag over their head. And as they see you push open the doors before anything else can happen, the sixth person holding the individual shoves them forward into the circle. And as that person's foot falls on Decidedly's uh, horseshoe, they disappear. Ooh, and we've probably got until that last peal of the bells, right, before this gate closes again? Yep. That's a good idea. Yeah, so um, I've pushed the door open, and it's like, all right, the game's up. (laughs) Hey, you, get your damn hat. Oh, too late. Second. (laughs) Oh, you Uh, flats. Yeah, what are you you doing? You have no idea what you're messing with here. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, I guess we gotta go and get them. Yeah, um, third tolls. Yeah, we're rushing. I'll rush forward. Uh, well, I'll say, Jay. I could go through and try and grab them from. Yeah. Uh, so Jay, I imagine so moves a lot faster. Than forward. Yeah, yeah. I'll try to see if I can 
go through where they're going and then try and grab the person with a bag over their head. Do you wherever they are touch do you touch the uh the horseshoe? Uh if you have to follow them then yes, I suppose. And Jay rushes forward and disappears. Fourth barrel bell tolls. Okay. New character. Okay, okay let's go. so yeah, I walk him forward. Uh I just look at these guys in the road and say, You guys are in so much trouble. And I step onto the horseshoe. Oh, I- yeah, if I die, I am haunting all of you. Fifth bill, <laughs> bill tolls. Tol- 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 okay, <laughs> so now that you have all stepped, I mean, on I was expecting only I was going to go through, and you guys could deal with the rest. <laughs> uh, they just don't anything. So. Let's see if I had it set up right. This time. Yay! You guys find yourself in the nineteen fifty-four uh, Kentucky Derby. Woo-hoo. Everything is Let's kind make, of gray. Make, make quick. <laughs> there are throngs of people in the stands and horses running around the track. Wow. Are there, are there any people in um, modern clothing? Um, everybody make an awareness check. Mm. Eight. Eight for me as well. Yep. Oh, Eight for me too. Yeah. So, um, you do well. The first person you spot is kind of has stumbled and fallen at your feet. Is the person that was literally just pushed through right before you guys step into the gateway. Um, but you do see as you kind of look to the throng across the way. You guys are kind of in the central field uh in the middle of the racetrack oh um, okay with the it's so you're kind of like you're kind of like down here as the horses run by but you do see in the stands some people wandering that look like they're in um, <laughs> a bit modern confused. clothing yeah <laughs> you do uh, also see um flitting amongst the crowd and everyone sees this um, what appear to be shadows that maybe were once people. Uh, okay, let me say. Yeah. So um, if you if you stay in a ghost realm for too long, uh, every day that you spend in a ghost realm, you lose D6 will. When your will reaches zero, you essentially become a part of that ghost realm you can never leave oh dear so depending upon how long they've been pushing people into that gateway yeah that audience could be entirely made of people that had been pushed through here at some point well the majority of the audience is in what you would consider to be period clothing Oh, so this is just the shadows that would be people that would have been here. Okay. And there are many. Oh. Anyone from the 21st century? <laughs> Come down here. Stop <laughs> waving at them trying to get attention. Um, um, you do so see like, I've got my phone on. I'm, I'm playing, um, probably can't get access to, to the internet here. It actually doesn't but... work. Oh. Black screen. Oh man. Who's this person at our feet? That's what I wanted to know. I'm gonna help them um, up and if you help them up, it. take the bag off their head. Yeah. Uh like what what's happening? Yeah. Um it's complicated, but you're gonna have <laughs> one hell of a story to tell your grandkids. And the horses run past. Yeah. Thundering hooves. Yeah. <laughs> I think that one's gonna win. Go so decidedly. Go so decidedly. <laughs> um right, uh, who is the, do we recognize this person? Uh no. just, okay. No, they may have been Pretty taken strange. too recently to have been reported. <laughs> yeah. Been taken yeah. tonight. Yeah. Should we try to grab okay. some of the other oddball like the ones that look out of place? We've got to get across the track if that's the case, and there's a good chance you're gonna get trapped. That's fine, horses are just so, fast, so we've got in, we've got a lap. It, in response to Sam, I'm also a dial. yeah, that's true. In response to Sam shouting out anybody from the 21st century, 
<laughs> um, you do see some heads turn, um, but you also see some shades that you don't know how, but they have taken notice. Okay, well, I mean, we couldn't make that, that might not be a good thing. Well, if there, are, if there are people here, we need to get them out as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a sneaky feeling it might be too late for those people. Yeah, those guys. So yeah, that. I mean, they can come with us, but I don't know what kind of life they have. Um, how do you think you're going to get out? Well, that's a very good uh, question. Uh, there might be an accompanying like horse shoe somewhere. Yeah. Oh, um. Okay. Like in a horse race, then you have like a wreath. Like a horse wreath they put around their neck or something when they, when they win. win. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is. Yeah. And in win. fact, you, you can see the area um, off to the side where the, the yeah, exactly, where all of that is set up and ready to go for whoever wins the race. Mm. Okay, we'll go to the winners. Get, get, get everyone to the like, winners paddock, winners paddock. Okay, so are you going to try and do this by being big and drawing attention to yourself, or are you going to take some time to go through the crowd and look for people and maybe try to avoid the shades? So we've got to get across the track to get to some of these people, haven't we? Yeah, but the track is very large, yeah. and yeah. you can wait until the ho the horses are all fairly well grouped. Yeah. I mean, there's fact, nobody more, to stop us, right? Because if you're taking, yeah, exactly. And and if you if you're watching, it looks like the horse's position every time they pass you is exactly same. the same. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, like they're actually going to do the same over lap over and over again. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're trying to like pick people yeah. out from the crowd. Yeah. So I just say to this person then. You need to come with us. We're going to try and get you out of here. Oh, okay. Um, but we're going to get across there. Yeah, and, you know, watching for the opening, it doesn't take you long to recognize that it's fairly easy and there's, a, there's one spot where you have, you know, like a minute or two to get across um, as the horses are rounding the, the rear side of the track. Um, yeah. Are we going to try to be stealthy and grab some more people? Or think, uh, yeah, I don't think we should be shouting out. Particularly. Yeah, I don't know what anybody else. Start stealthy as yeah. Once we get into the crowd, then obviously we'll be a bit stealthier and okay. Or you lost his voice so, entirely. Yeah. Let's <laughs> let's do stealth checks. Oh no! Oh, it's inevitable, really, isn't it? Or actually, who has the? Well, we can all do separately. Nine's great, or nine yeah, plus. I mean, actually, I think Sam, yeah, has some stealth. Eight. Eight. No bonus. Ooh, uh, that's just me then. Um, the pressure. <laughs> I'm going to spend two will to pass that if that's all right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So taking your time and trying to avoid shades, they don't appear to have a wide radius of awareness, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, probably because they're just echoes, really. Um, but they do seem to be hunting. And as you are trying to collect people, um, I will say that you do unfortunately witness a shade finding someone who looks like they were dressed like you are, like okay. they've been pushed through the portal. Yep. Yeah. And the shade just kind of slithers up behind them and engulfs them. Ah, can we okay. intervene in any way, or is it just too, like too far away? Uh, yeah, I think I'd, I, I think I'd like to try if I could. Okay. Me. So let's do this then. Um, initiative in liminal. I personally love you're going to make an awareness test. If you pass, you go before your enemy, as it were, if you fail, you go after. Okay. 
And, and in this case, your target, your target is eight because it does not really have any awareness. Okay. Lloyd passes. And trousers, you pass, right? You have an awareness. Did, yeah, nine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Two. two. Yeah. So yeah, you pass. So you all get to act before the shade does. What would you like to do? Um, I think, I, I, as a shade, would my touch of darkness work on it? As it, is it does. Shade? It works on living and dead. Okay. I think that's probably the I'll open it. Um, see if okay. I can. Um, so I make a law versus its conviction. Going to bust out the big necromantic magic. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So that is a uh, 12. Okay. So that definitely passes. Um, when it says versus conviction, basically how that works is say it has a conviction of two. The base target number is 10. You would be rolling against a, or, or sorry, the base target number is eight. It would become a 10 because you're rolling against a conviction of two. I see. Um, but it doesn't have any conviction. You just needed an eight. So you did it. What was your total actually? Did you say 12 or 13? Uh, 12. Okay. So if you had rolled the 13, that would be five more than what you needed to roll, which would have been a critical. Oh, um, okay. I can spend a will, will. on it. <laughs> no, you can't spend will to increase to. Oh, wait. Can you spend will to increase to a critical? You're already spending one will to activate Touch of Darkness, or two will, isn't it? Two will. Two will. Yeah. yeah. Spend two will to make a law versus conviction test. So I've spent the. Law, you know um, what? I'm, I'm going to see right now, so I don't have to look it up because we're near the end. You absolutely can't spend one additional will that makes it a critical. You do two d six. This is what's crazy. If you haven't looked at his touch of darkness ability, uh, it does uh, d six physical and d six will, um, oh. both. But you're going to do two d six physical and two d six will. Is so it, let's so see. Same number on both stats. No, roll them separately. Okay. So, uh, firstly for Will. Okay. Nine. Um, and for its endurance, seven. Okay. So the nine is enough to essentially stun it because you reduce it to zero Will. Uh, you don't destroy it, though. Um, so that brings us to either Alex or Jay. Um, Get him away! Get him away! Yeah, I can just what, pull them what? free because I can't really do anything to the shade itself. You okay. can, actually. You're physically in the ghost realm. You can physically interact with shades. Ooh. You can physically interact with anything here. It's like with space. Oh. You could. Oh, cool. uh, so that'd be plus four, I think. Uh, it's done. So do you get eleven? Know? Okay. So yeah, eleven plus two for me. Well, plus two for melee. So thirteen. Oh no, it's eleven total. Eleven total. Okay. So not a critical, but you do your damage for being uh, a wolf. So when you're in your dire wolf form, base damage is almost always just a d six. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that. Your dire wolf form gets a plus one damage equivalent to like a sword or a, a, a blade, right? Because they're claws, unless you're biting. But then on top of that, because you have supernatural strength, you're dealing an additional four points of damage. So Ooh. basically, you just okay, shred, nine, then. yeah, you shred the remainder of this shade and just pull it apart just as it's about to engulf this other person that appears to be from your timeline that you grab. Um, so grabbing as many people as you can see, you said you are thinking that the exit point is going to be in the winner's circle. Yep. Okay. So we'll say that you find 
takes a few days for people to lose all of their will. We'll say that you find four, now five people, including the one that you saved. Um, so a total of six, the person that you came through with and yeah. then uh, six, uh, five others. Unfortunately, at least two of the recent um, abductees have already turned into shades, shades by that number. But you also notice there are far more shades Oof. than missing people. Yeah. Um, this is so, going on for some time. Yeah. As you pull all of them towards the winter circle, what are you going to do? How do you think you get out? Looking for a horseshoe or something in the shape of a horseshoe. No, no horseshoes. I mean, those are all on the horses. You, you probably cross the winner's line? Trample you. <laughs> um, I mean, I can probably do it faster so I could try cross the winner's line. If we need to all shoes, I can get four of them pretty quickly. Um, for horse. <laughs> Just take a horse out. <laughs> so you're going to try and cross the winner's line? Yeah, and if they see me disappear, then they know it work. And that's exactly what happens. Uh, you wow. see Jay okay. dash over the finish line and disappears instantly. Jay, when you pop back into the mausoleum, um, the candles have burned down to nothing. And there's nobody there. Uh, this way, don't follow. It'll, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> track him. Ooh. Yeah, I'll try and track them if I can. Okay, go ahead and make an awareness test. Um, are Alex and Sam going to usher everybody across the finish yeah, line? Yeah, I basically just say, look, everybody, we have to get across the finish line if we're going to leave this place, okay? Um, and oh, only a four that's away. interesting. So since you rolled double ones, uh, that is, it's not like a critical fail, but it is interesting in that, uh, obviously we're not playing this long term, but just so you know, and other people know who are watching, uh, if you don't use will to turn that into a success, you actually get an immediate experience point for accepting the failure on the double one. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, and then the way experience works in liminal is, uh, once you get five experience points, you get to increase one of your skills and get an advancement point. Once you get three advancement points, you then get to purchase like a talent or a trait, uh, to increase yourself. And then all of them clear. Um, so it just kind of keeps increasing over time. Anyway, um, so you don't, I mean, you catch a scent, but it's not strong enough for you to be able to track. Uh, unfortunately, these, these people are going to be in the wind, as it were. In the future, you might have to lay more stakeouts to try and catch them, although who knows if they'll return now that they know that a group is onto them. Uh, that being said, as Alex and Sam are ushering the survivors across the finish line, several of them look like they're about to go. Like, in fact, one looks almost transparent oh. uh, as you usher them across the finish line. Yeah. And um, assuming that you send all of them through first and then you follow. Yeah. Um, as you follow, you find yourself, uh, Jay, actually, it's kind of funny. So we'll lay it out like this. About uh, a half an hour after you came through the finish line, one of the survivors comes through. Then about a half an hour later, another one comes through. Then about a half an hour later, another one comes through. And so on until finally whoever goes last, Alex or Sam, uh, yeah. pops back in several hours later. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and yeah, so you've rescued some people. Yay! Uh, to, to give you some, some wind up, uh, because we're going to finish here, but I think you're interested in knowing mm -hmm. if you had continued and then spent some time doing some research, 
uh, and looking around town, you would find that all of the people that were terrorized by Josiah uh, Lynch, they are either in hospitals under John or Jane Doe uh, because they've forgotten who they are and they have no identification on them. Uh, or in the case of Mia, for example, you find her living on the street with no idea who she is. Uh, yeah, you lose oh, that. Yeah, yeah, about clothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Madison so, is actually uh, in a local hospital. Uh, so you're able to find all of these people and then maybe with some concentrated work between Alex and Sam, able to remove some of those blocks and restore uh, oh, some of their, it, it their memory. It actually did do something to them then, which, which did, caused yeah. them to lose their memories and things. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then not having any idea on them or anything like that. Yeah. Um, because that because although he didn't admit it, it, Josiah was stripping them of those things. <laughs> <laughs> or making them drop them on purpose uh, okay. because if yeah. because somehow he knows enough about modern society that like people who don't have their IDs and phones are going to become lost. So he's a little bit more malevolent than he seemed. Okay, uh, we're, getting, we're getting him a nice little plaque on the fountain anyway with his with his, with his name on it. Yeah. To his, his I had more with him sure too, but we didn't go that way, and that's fine. Um, wow. So yeah, that's uh, that's it. You've saved some people. <laughs> there's there's a weird group of people trying to sacrifice people to ghost realms in town. Yeah, it's a it's a partial success. It's, right? no success. it's a partial success. I mean, we would obviously just like a win, a win. Um, get 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 um, Jeremiah to chain up the um, the gate until we can get the locks changed. I always think it's, mag- it. it's magic, yeah. isn't it? I think they're using magic. No, because they're, no, they're not. They're not using magic. They're rubbish at magic. They're fake magic. Yeah. So they actually haven't got. They're not using magic. Yeah, maybe to get maybe they've got a few little, little tricks that maybe maybe opening locks is quite a simple thing. Right, and, and maybe they thought their ritual was opening the ghost realm. But exactly, but it wasn't. It was it just wasn't. timing. Yep. Um. Ooh. Yeah. So I mean, we'll just put some. So is it, is the, the horseshoe is the actual focus then, or is it just going to be the horseshoe? Yeah, so if we can just cover up the horseshoe, up we'll just cover up the horseshoe. I don't know if the Pope family is going to be happy with that. It's fine. Well, they haven't, they haven't been here for ages. They were yeah, they've been six months. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll, just, we'll just chisel it out. It's fine. <laughs> oh, no. And what we'll do is, because we'll, it's obviously one of, um, it's one of uh, decidedly's. Um, yeah. Horseshoes. We just <laughs> what we'll do is we just one. take it out and put a different one in. Oh, yeah. it doesn't belong to decidedly, right? Would yeah, that work? I would say that would work. Yeah, and then yeah. you have I would just do it surreptitiously. Uh, yeah, and then we can have decidedly well, and then horseshoes. You have a ghost realm essentially. <laughs> yeah, you have yeah, access I'm, to. Yeah, I don't know what you can do with it, but you have it. Bury it. <laughs> because if well. if you. Let's say that you do that and you pull that horseshoe out and replace it with a dummy. Yeah. Uh, and then you decide to test it one night at midnight. Yeah, it yeah. still works wherever you are. Uh, well, so de- the decidedly horseshoe still works. Uh, okay. It's yeah. still so we do find way. those cultists we can send prison. through. So basically, if, 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 we ever, like, yeah. if we ever come across people and we want to like, you know, put them in a supernatural prison for a while, we can just I mean, say, right, you, take your you chances with the shade. Yeah. If you want to kill, kill, kill him. I mean, yeah. I, Why yeah. not kill him? Um, yeah, I, I, I think it would be. As long as they stay on the other it side of the, of the uh, racetrack, it's fine. Also, that, that, I mean, you got to keep in mind, the people that you rescued from the ghost realm are people who don't know anything. Yeah. It didn't mm-hmm. take you guys as practitioners very long to figure out where the exit was. Yeah, well, they would have just been wandering around confused, wouldn't they? Because exactly, they no idea they're like, what is there. happening? Yeah, um, yeah, bless them. Um, but oh, like, so like Alex really said, interesting point. stories. Yeah, no <laughs> I was I was in a weird like black and white horse race for days. Yeah, <laughs> kept repeating itself. Okay, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time? Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm. Oh, that's that great. Hey, that's well done. 
But yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Thanks very much, Brian. That was fantastic.